189 runs. But let's remind you of everything that happened on day three with the highlights. It's a short ball and it's been pulled for six over square leg. Lovely pick up that from Sam Cook. He looks very comfortable. And from the Radcliffe Road end, and that one is edged and taken, and that is the end of Sam Cook's excellent effort as night watchman, as Clark takes a low catch just going down to his right as Hutton comes in. Bowls, and has he got two and two? He has. That is the immediate end to Jordan Cox, who got a ball that was going down leg side. He just flicked at it. Very well taken by Joe Clark again. It's Pennington. It's in and bowls and well, you can put your feet back on the ground because Tom Wesley has worked this into the gap on the leg side. Totten. That's done by Longley. Once again, this one's run away behind square and that'll go for four. Nicely done by Matt Critchley. Just opened the face, guided it away all the way along the ground. Pocket as they release the ball. Pennington in again. Oh, has he got him? Slight feather, Wesley push forward. Same channel is bowled delightfully well in this spell, Dylan Pennington, and he definitely deserves that wicket. Lyndon James in. Oh, it's a lovely drive. Lovely from Paul Walter gets him off the pair. Desperate dive there from Brett Hutton at mid-off. That was outside there. James, Critchley. Critchley rather turned round by this, but he's got it away past the bowler and down to the boundary for four. He was driving, as he, he's a very fine driver, but on this particular occasion, it came off something of a thick outside edge. Button in, round the wicket for the left-hander. And he's slashed that away, slightly short and wide, through a vacant, vacant gully region for four runs. We see Dane Patterson into the attack for the first time, from the specifically from the uh, Radcliffe Road end today, and there's pleasant to drive there, but that's gone through for the third boundary in the last three overs. Yeah, an exciting player to watch for sure. Oh, not far away from a sprawling Ben Duckett there as Walter flicks that through the leg side but times it nicely and it beats Lyndon James, I think it is, at the mid-wicket boundary for four runs. Patterson in once more. Walter, oh, it's a lovely shot. Walter steps down the wicket to meet Dane Patterson, makes it into a straightish half volley and he just work. Paul Walter. Ooh, and uh, Walter has got this ball away down the ground and uh, going through to the bound get the chance of a second new ball. That's a very expansive shot there from Walter as he just walks down the wicket and flicks Lyndon James quite dismissively to be honest. Harrison in again, bowls and Walter goes once again big on the leg side and gets a boundary, no chance for Montgomery. He's been eyeing that up Lucy as you said. If he's trying to be a bit more expansive before that new ball. Goes after that one, got hold of it, it's in the air but neither Slater nor Montgomery are going to get anywhere near it, it lands just shy of the ropes. Montgomery in again bowls and Paul Walter goes big on the leg side and everybody's looking towards the stand and it's gone for four it clatters one bounce into the wall there you don't get yourself out Montgomery bowls and Walter does go big and this time he's underneath it so that will be deposited into the seat it is up go the arms of umpire Longley Harrison in again edge caught well, 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 well. Duck it with a good catch, diving down to his left. And crikey, is it going to be a repeat of days one and two where nothing happened in the afternoon? You start after tea. On the edge. Harrison in again. He's bowled beautifully. This is chopped on. In fact, it's chopped through to uh, wicketkeeper Joe Clark and Harmer in and out quickly. So we will find out now, presumably. There's Hutton. He's in and bowls. And this is uh, going to go to the fence for Shane Snater. This one was... Pennington in. Oh, that's an agricultural. <laughs> Slightly back of a lane for Dylan Pennington. Shane Snater has gone. Oh, that's oh, a lovely what shot. A shot. Pitched up and just driven, drilled straight back down the ground. Pennington runs back in. Interesting to see his response here. Slightly back of a length and it's been... Oh yeah, I'll give him the better of the doubt. He opened the face of the bat there and ran it past the third slip-ish Rossington. It's a short ball and it's pulled around the corner. Mm. Very dismissively, swivel pull, never left the ground, four runs. And he's waiting. Oh, and he's beaten on the inside edge. It's four runs. Has he hit it? Oh, he has inside edge. Beat Joe Clark, diving away to his left. It would have been an absolute 
scream at that if you'd have caught it, to be fair. Rossington, the right-hander on strike. And bottom hand shovels it. Miss Field from... Who is that? Brad Hutton. Thank you. Here is James in bowls, and there'll be no run here as Rossington can't time the ball. So they were the highlights from yesterday. And as you saw there, it was that partnership between Paul, Walter and Match Critchley that really helped build the Essex second innings. But it was Nottingham's Calvin Harrison that managed to break that partnership with the wicket of Walter. And the Trembridge media team caught up with Calvin at the end of stumps yesterday. Calvin, a, a funny sort of day, really, that's mirrored the first two, where we've had an afternoon session without too much going on and a morning and evening session where, where we saw a flurry of wickets. What's your assessment of the way it's concluded at the end of day three? Um, yeah, it was a, a good day of work. I think, uh, yeah, obviously the third day was, was sort of where it was going to all get set up and it went back and forth a little bit. They, they obviously played really well through the middle um, and they had a good partnership there between, obviously, Critchley and Walter, which it was at that sort of point when it could have gone either way, really. Um, so it's back in the balance a bit more now, um, but important for us to just get um, on it as quickly as we, we get back on um, in the morning uh, by the looks of things here um, and try and get these last, last two wickets as quickly as possible. How important was it that you sort of stayed in the contest, I guess, in that, in that second session? Because there's going to be times this season where, where partnerships build, but you can't let the game get away from you during those periods of time. Yeah, we needed to keep as much energy as we could. That was sort of the, our, our, our goal going into today was to sort of uh, mirror the energy we had on, on day one uh, and to hold the rates as long as we could um, which I think for the most part we, we did quite a good job of um, uh, going at yeah, yeah, a controlled rate um, and try to try to keep things dry on a pitch that wasn't sort of offering too much obviously with the kookaburra ball as well um, not not too much of a, of a nipping um, sort of situation going on but uh, I think we held in there uh, through, through that, that big patch in the middle and to what extent is that sort of a, a team effort? Because when new, new bowlers come on, I guess they need to ensure that they're playing their, their part in that too. I think in the first session, the last 18 overs only went for 35 runs, and, mm. and then we saw the culmination of that in wickets. So you can see how it pays off. Definitely, yeah, exactly. As soon as you, as soon as you can build pressure, um, and it is a teamwork thing, like a partnership thing, even like you talk about it when you're batting, but when you're bowling, it's just as important to, to back up the guy at the other end. Um, and if you can do that for a long period of time, it puts, puts batters under pressure and, and then it happens very quickly because all of a sudden the momentum sort of shifts in your favour and then you get one and the guy coming in sort of feels bogged down without having really faced the ball. So um, it, it swings it around. And let's talk about your role that you've had to play as a, as a spinner in, in early April. We saw a wicket on day one, that Jordan Cox uh, sort of beating his, his outside edge. I guess do you expect something like that to happen this, this early in the season and how pleasing is it when, when it does? Yeah, it's, it's not something you expect, I guess, uh, early season as a spinner. Um, but, um, yeah, it's, it's, there's a little bit of rough kind of uh, forming there sort of outside the line of the stumps, um, a little bit of sort of fluffy, fluffy rough. Um, so it was offering a little bit. It's not necessarily to, to go and target too much or a straight was kind of skidding on. Um, and then, it, fortunately, yeah, it was biting a little bit out, out of that rough. And a personal point of view, how pleasing was it for you to be the man who, who broke that partnership just after after tea as well? Mm. Probably you know one of the more important wickets today. Yeah, definitely. Well, I was hungry for a bowl um, mm. at, at a time when the guys looked pretty set, um, uh, and it was a, a similar sort of situation. It was we wanted to to try and crack um, crack it open again, um, and then we came off for the break um, after sort of finishing off the session quite well, uh, needing to start again and. and yeah, I think they, they sort of built a nice energy and, um, yeah, fortunately got, got the breakthrough. So. And you've had the, the, uh, the opportunity, I guess, to, to look at conditions from, from slip, bowling and batting now. So with that in mind, you, there's a lead of about 290 at the minute. Are you able to put sort of a, a figure on what, what's chaseable now? Um, oh, it's tough to say, really, what it'll play like on the last day. Um, obviously, spin might come into it a little bit more, if it, um, depending on what the weather does. But... Um, Whatever we can, can do here, we, we want to obviously get these last two workers as quickly as possible and um, we know we, we positive, positive enough as a batting unit to, um, to sort of go and hunt down whatever, whatever they end up with. Um, hopefully around about that 300 mark would be, would be ideal.
Well, hello everybody. Where, uh, very good morning. Welcome to Trent Bridge for the start of the final day here between Nottinghamshire and Essex. Those of you following on the uh, on the live uh, picture stream, the live video stream there. Um, many thanks to Aaron for setting the day up and uh, running us through yesterday's highlights. Very. Uh, interesting interview with the Nottinghamshire leg spinner Calvin Harrison might come back to that in uh, a moment or two the players are out in the middle it is dry thankfully the forecast is uh, predominantly to remain dry throughout the um, fullness of this final day um, it's, it's difficult isn't it it does say perhaps 10 to 15 percent showers this afternoon but uh, as was pointed out uh, that does mean it's 85 to 90 percent likely to uh, to stay dry um, let's hope so because this is a uh, a thrilling start to the season between Nottinghamshire and Essex I'm Dave Bracegirdle from BBC Radio Nottingham Paul Newton from BBC Essex will be with me in the uh, next minute or two just doing an update next door as Dylan Pennington gets us underway then with Essex batting on eight wickets down Shane Snater pushes the first ball back to the Notts debutant Dylan Pennington and we're underway 96 overs no more overs can be added on of course on the final day so it's a, a 96 over day lunch at 1 tea at 340 they're sort of set in stone Essex lead by 289 to Nottinghamshire Right now, if no more runs are scored, obviously would require 290, which in itself might be a tough task. As Pennington in, bowls to Snater, who drives it up to Ben Duckett at mid-on. Uh, and there's no run. It's not Ben Duckett, I beg his pardon. Second ball in and a misidentifying. That's uh, Dane Patterson doing the fielding. Shane Snater on 29. His partner at the other end, Adam Rossington, 17 not out for Rossington. Now, yesterday, he didn't come in until number 10, which raised suspicions, came in behind Simon Harmer and uh, Shane Snater. 3.29 for eight. And uh, Snater will work this onto the leg side and through the leg side for four. Clipped away, four runs. Fullish delivery on the pads. Bowled by Pennington and uh, Shane Snater. Wasted no time at all in working that away for four. First runs of the morning. All the threes on the board. A gooch. 3-3-3 three, three, three for eight for Essex. So the lead up to 293. Yes, Adam Rossington. Um, I watched him in the warm-ups this morning with the binoculars fairly closely. And it looks like on his left index finger there was a splint this morning. Next delivery on its way now. And Snater goes big. He's going to get more runs here. And uh, I see Bermidi's after it ball just plugged a little bit so they only get a couple of runs three three five for eight now uh, you ask relevant questions to the relevant people all I've been told is um, he's not been for an x-ray as we understand it but uh, Essex are a little concerned about the finger damage to Adam Rossington that's why he came in uh, number 10 behind Harmer and Snater and we have seen this morning here uh, Michael Pepper doing the wicket-keeping drills. He was part of the squad. Pepper left out of the starting eleven as uh, Pennington comes in. And again, Snater looks for a big hit, but he's uh, punched it to a mead at mid-off. And Shane Snater and Essex, no doubt, going for quick runs. A very warm welcome to uh, listeners to Five Sports Extra here at Trent Bridge. We've started on time again. We've uh, been especially fortunate with the weather over the four days of this match. We have had really chilly biting winds blustery gusty conditions but throughout we've uh, got most of the the cricket in and hopefully a full day of cricket lies ahead as Pennington comes in again to Shane Snater and he's uh, worked this on the leg side he got into no sort of position at all to play that he was totally off balance you could see his intent his initial intent was to get outside the line and pull it away to leg. Uh, I'm Dave Bracegirdle from Radio Nottingham. I'll uh, just be doing an update for local radio listeners in a second. Lyndon James is going to bowl and then we'll uh, have a little bit of a chat as to where the game might be heading and uh, what you might have missed if you've not been following the first three days. Lyndon James has two wickets in this innings. Two for 60. We're in the 93rd over, about to be bowled. Essex 3 3 5 for 8, leading by 2 9 5. You'd imagine they'd want to try and, if possible, try and whack a quick 30 or 40. Here is that radio update. 
Championship at Trent Bridge, as it's all resumed on 329 for 8, holding an overall advantage of 299 over Nats. Well, we've started on time, Lisa. Thankfully, uh, a dry, cloudy day, we're told. All results possible. Essex have had a pretty decent opening over here with six runs already coming. They're 335 for eight. That's a lead of 295. Knots clearly want to get these last two wickets and begin their batting effort. Could be an absolute cracker here at Trent Bridge. Essex 335 for eight. So that's the... Uh, Update done for the local radio listeners as Lyndon James comes in from the Radcliffe Road end, bowling to Adam Rossington. And uh, with a high backlift, he defends. He's on 17, as I say, he's uh, struggling with some damage of some sort to the index finger on his left hand. And as we always sort of say, if, if somebody's injured um, on one day and then they come back on the next, they're never going to be exactly the same. The condition has either been worsened or or made better and I suspect he's probably feeling a, a little sore having taken a few short deliveries yesterday but he's got runs here off an outside edge not to have two slips in position had there been a third it would have been or should have been stopped it wouldn't have been a catch because it scuttled along the ground but nobody at third man and Rossington is underway so he moves on to 21 this partnership is 32 Essex were put in on the first morning made 253 they were in a Decent position mid-afternoon, 170 for two. We'll feel they should have got more. Nottinghamshire, when they battered, they will also feel they should have got more, but they did manage to eke out a 40-run first innings lead before being bowled out for 2-9-3. And now this Essex second innings, 3-3-9 for eight, as James, again, nice and full, and another lovely shot through the offside by Rossington. Might just have stung a little bit as he drove it into the gap, through extra cover for four, but... These are uh, very useful, very handy runs for Adam Rossington, for Shane Snater and for Essex. 3.43 for eight and we can uh, bid a very uh, warm welcome and uh, a very good morning to um, Paul Newton who's just joined me. Having done his update for BBC Essex, we'll bring Paul in in mere fullness of time as Lyndon James comes in again and bowls and Rossington defends. A couple of very welcome boundaries already for Rossington. One in the previous over for Snater. Just what we expected, Paul. Essex just to go after the runs in the first 15, 20 minutes if they can. Yes, um, obviously it wouldn't make any sense for them merely to prod around. Um, Jamie Porter is a bit of a prodder, so when the next, next wicket falls, uh, it might be an idea for Essex to declare, particularly if they've added another 20 or so in the meantime. Here's Lyndon James, final ball of the... 93rd over bowls now and Rossington drives with plenty of bottom hand up to Matt Montgomery at mid on there's no run 8 from that over Lyndon James 21 overs 1 maiden 2 for 68 it's Paul and uh, and myself at least for the time being this morning um, oh, I, I was hoping that we'd uh, be able to have a chat early on with uh, Ollie Stone and uh, had, uh, gone round to, to sort that out but then Ollie was told he had to be 12th man this morning just in case uh, it was required on the field, so maybe we'll be able to get a chat with the uh, currently injured Nottinghamshire and, of course, England fast bowler Ollie Stone perhaps later on in the day. But right now, Essex 343 for eight. It's been called off um, at Derby already on day four. Match abandoned without a ball being bowled. They've had no play in any of the first three days either at Chesterley Street between Durham and Gloucestershire. An inspection taking place there now. As we see at Pennington. Racing from Stuart Broad End. Bowls and might have been an inside edge into pad. We'll just see what the signal is, a leg by or a single. It's a leg by uh, Steve O'Shaughnessy. So 344 for eight with uh, Rossington now into strike on 25. Fact. Delayed starts in Division 1 at Durham again. Uh, Old Trafford where Lancashire playing Surrey and uh, indeed at Edgbaston where Warwickshire playing Worcestershire. Kent Somerset is underway. Somerset 384 for 7. Still in their first innings lead by 100. Pennington to Rossington. 
Rossington hits this powerfully through the offside chase out to the boundary unavailing for Hasib Hamid and that's four runs to the extra cover boundary nicely played off the back foot by Rossington he may have a damaged finger but he hasn't restricted his stroke play today and he moves up to 29 and Essex leading by 308 of 348 for eight. Yeah, no idea how close it actually was to Matthew Montgomery. It looked spectacular, didn't it, as he flew through the yeah. air, but couldn't get anything on it. Division 2, then, as I say, they're off. They've finished at, uh, at Derby. They've given up without a ball being bowled there. Very sad start to the season for Derbyshire, Gloucestershire and all their supporters. No play yet this morning. Again, rain at Headingley between Yorkshire and Leicestershire. Pennington to Rossington. Ooh, that's a good delivery. Leaves the batsman off the pitch. Plenty of pace in that. Very well bowled, 3.48 per eight. Yes, what an extraordinary thing that on the western end of the Brian Clough Way, um, not a ball can be bowled across four days, and yet a mere roughly 16 miles mm. away at the eastern end, um, the only time that's been lost was an hour uh, on the first morning, which has since been made up, and of course the 22 overs last night as Pennington comes in again. Good straight approach. Bowls to... Rossington plays it sedately to Haynes at to mid wicket and there's no run. Seemed to be heading towards a draw at Hove, you'd imagine. North Ants made 371 in their first inning. Sussex still batting in their first 356 for six, but play going on there on the south coast. And that lords, that high scoring game, a record breaking game indeed for Sam Northeast, of course, as Glamorgan made 620 for three, declared Middlesex in reply. Also piling on the runs, 463 for five, so only eight wickets have gone down over three days. Pennington bowls and goes right through the defences of Rossington. This is a good over from Pennington. And uh, Essex, who clearly want to get on with it, just being checked. But they have made good progress overall this morning, taking their 329 for eight along by 19 runs. And uh, we're just in the fifth over of the morning. Uh, William Jennings has uh, kindly been in touch uh, on Twitter at Brace Cricket. Um, Fox has found no cricket to watch, found your game online, enjoying it. Just correct myself, third over of the morning, uh, mm. I should have said so. Fast start for Essex, who had another single here as Russington dabs the ball square on the offside. And the easiest of singles, 3.49 for eight. Um, if again, Paul, we can impose upon you because you're you, you're manning the the email address, aren't you? Which yes. I still can't remember. But you'd invite uh, if anybody's got any comments or thoughts or just merely wants to have their name read out on the radio, we'd uh, we'd be delighted to do that. Yes, the address is BBC Essex Cricket, all one word at gmail dot com. I'll repeat it: BBC Essex Cricket at gmail dot com. And as Dave says, we'd be delighted to uh, hear from all and sundry, including uh, I'm sure we will have some listeners from other counties who aren't involved in this game because their games are off. Yes, nice once again to have cricket on five sports extra. The day set up as always by Kevin Howell, who's um, had a frustrating few days at Old Trafford there. The weather's not been great, has it, in various parts. As Lyndon James bowls and the next one is driven into the offside by Rossington, who moves on to 31 and were it the first innings, of course, Essex would just be celebrating a third batting bonus point because that is 350 up, 350 for eight, but no such uh, delights for the batting side in the second innings. But Essex will be pleased to have a lead of 310. I wouldn't expect them to go beyond 20 minutes, but uh, we'll have to see. We've had 10 or 11 minutes. As Lyndon James in once more, short and Snater pulled out of... Any attempted hook there, there's two men out on the leg side. Yeah, it was a shame that uh, 22 overs were lost from yesterday's play because I think Essex would have been bowled out without having to think of declaring and Nottinghamshire would therefore be chasing their total, which uh, would have begun yesterday evening. I think would have been guaranteed mm. an exciting finish, whereas it'll only take some interruption today, not necessarily very much to spoil a great game. 3.50 for eight. Lyndon James in once more. Shane Snater walking across his crease. Deflects it down to long leg for a single. 3.51 for eight. Yes, he's a, a very idiosyncratic batsman, Shane Snater. He has his own way of playing, which is always aggressive. And uh, he, he can actually play some absolutely textbook, rip-roaring shots, but uh, he can also play some uh, ones that aren't in the MCC coaching manual. 
voice of Paul Newton from BBC Essex. Lyndon James comes in once more and Rossington gets a stride in and blocks it back to the bowler. In terms of Essex and uh, what they would hope to do today, clearly pile on a quick 30 or 40 or 50 runs as quickly as they can and then give themselves more than 80 overs to bowl Nottinghamshire out. I say more than 80, just in case they find themselves needing one or two overs late in the day. They'd like to have the option of maybe being able to grab that second new ball if it becomes a, a little bit of a close finish as uh, this one's pulled out with control by Rossington. He'll get a single out to Ben Slater who I'm sure will be looking to uh, pile on the the runs he missed out in the first innings for Nottinghamshire. Batting at three behind a Seba Mead and Ben Duckett watched them all have a, a batting net this morning. Slater at three, Joe Clark at four. He's been on the field most of the uh, the contest, actually. Joe Clark scored a century in the Nottinghamshire first innings, doing a good job with the gloves on. As James in once more, and there's a big, big-looking shot down the ground. He's got hold of it, dragging it slightly agriculturally through deep mid-wicket for four, but... I say welcome runs for Snater and that takes the partnership up to 49. 3.56 for eight here on a cloudy but dry morning at Trent Bridge. First round of matches in the county championship. Last day, um, many more runs and you'd imagine that Nottinghamshire's chances are going to be diminished. A lot will focus on Ben Duckett who scores his runs so quickly. Just how long he lasts when he gets to the crease, when Nottinghamshire do begin their chase, would uh, would give us some sort of pointer, if not so going to have any sort of chance at all. But already they would require 317 right now to win, and that's going to be a tall order, I think, on a sluggish wicket. So it's Dylan Pennington rushing in again from the Stuart Broad end. Comes towards us, bowls, and stabbed into the offside by Rossington. Never going to be a run there as uh, Matt Montgomery is closing from... Uh, about 18 yards distance in the covers and 356 for 8 leading by 316 Essex having added 27 this morning this now is the 5th over of the day it's become a sluggish wicket because of the, because of the ball really isn't it the Kookaburra ball they yeah. all say it's softened and not really given too much assistance to the bowlers Pennington bowls again Rossington again finds Matt Montgomery, who by the time he actually fields the ball, um, or by the time the ball is bowled, has sort of walked in with the bowler's run up and is only about 12 yards from the bat and no chance of a single there. Essex, in any case, are really looking for boundaries. They'll take singles if they're there, but uh, we've had some good lusty blows and both these batsmen are big hitters. Very kind of Daniels, as he's been... Uh following the commentary right throughout the uh, the course of the match. Very much enjoyed the chats with Jack Russell and Chris Broad earlier. Next delivery, and this ball is smashed over mid-wicket. I'm just looking to see where that has landed, and it's uh, in the row of seats there beyond the mid-wicket boundary, which will tell you that that's uh, six runs. And ninth wicket partnership now has realised 55 runs from just 65 balls. And these two have uh, certainly made fairly certain that Essex are going to be able, uh, if they don't have to declare, to uh, set Nottinghamshire a daunting target. 362 for 8 means their lead is 322. Can't be a lot wrong with that finger, can they? <laughs> he hits it. He's hit that many a mile up in the air and it landed, what, about 12 or 15 rows deep in the Larwood and Vaux stand. Yeah, he's really has suffered from finger injuries. Um, on one occasion it was thumb rather than finger. But as you say, he can't half give the ball a clout, bad finger or not. And Pennington will bowl to him again. And Rossington, nice shot, very stylish, but straight to Matt Montgomery at short extra, and there is no run. David Fenix says good morning. They're going to have another inspection at Durham at 12. Personally, can't see the point as more rain is forecast up there. It's. Uh been a wet one for uh, our friends up in the northeast. No cricket between Durham and Gloucestershire. Uh, uh, sorry, Durham and Hampshire in Division One. Derbyshire and Gloucestershire already called off. Pennington bowls and Rossington dabs it down for a single toward third man. 363 for eight, and he who's got to, he's probably had a bit more of the strength this morning than Snater, and he has uh, added considerably to his overnight tally and has moved up to 39. 
Evil runs. The, there's been some solid contributions in this Essex uh, card in the second innings. Um, 84 from Jamie Cox in the first innings. He missed out in the second, but uh, good runs throughout the scorecard. Pennington bolts to Snater, and Snater has also heaved this ball toward the mid-wicket boundary. It's very well prevented from crossing it, and uh, they can only take a single. There's a short boundary on the leg side, and uh, or on that side on this particular occasion, shall we say, because it, it all depends uh, which side we're talking about, where the bowling's from. A single is the result. 364 for eight. 324 the lead. You're listening to commentary from myself, Paul Newton, and Dave Bracegirdle, variously on behalf of BBC Essex, BBC Radio, Nottingham, and delighted to have five uh, sports extra with us um, this morning. Yeah, most of the, uh, the Essex top order of contributed in this game Cox 84 Elgar 80 in the first innings in this one uh, yesterday we saw a tremendous partnership between Paul Walter who made 79 and Matt Critchley 68 lots of other individual 20s and 30s and now this pair Snater 41 Rossington 39 just doing their little bit to boost the total maybe even up to as far as 350 lots will be disappointed I guess that the ninth wicket pairing have now added 57 but the rider to that is that uh, we shouldn't really, under normal circumstances, have Adam Rossington coming in at number 10 and is, uh, is playing with the freedom of somebody who knows that he's got a bit of an injury and he might just as well throw the bat and he's very effective at doing that. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, Sam Cook, the night watchman, added a useful 29 as well. And um, Essex will be delighted because in the first innings, 5, 6, 7 and 8 all failed as Dane Patterson ran through the middle order, but they've all got good runs second time round three out on the leg side fence so it might be a little bit of a short stuff here and uh, backing away Shane Snater who's trying to give himself some room to perhaps lift it over the offside he's missed it and it goes through to Clark I just wondered for a second there as uh, he almost took a step or two backwards towards the pavilion I just wondered if he'd perhaps feathered it through to Joe Clark but clearly no celebrations outlaw Chris has been in touch uh, sorry I've not been in touch Dave not been feeling too well but watching the uh, live stream I hope you're feeling a little better Chris look forward to seeing you soon as James Bowles and this is slammed on the leg side but despite all those fielders out there there are still plenty of very big gaps which have been exploited by Snater and another boundary for Essex 368 for 8 and Snater on to 45 Seba Mead is Captain in Nottinghamshire now runs across to have a word with Lyndon James. Got a tranche of emails to get through in the next five or ten minutes. Um, you're very, all very welcome to email us at bbcessexcricket at gmail.com. Well, <coughs> the result of that Amid chat was that Ben Duckett is now also going out to supplement the onside. So there are four on the fence on the leg side, two other fielders on the leg side. So uh, clearly don't expect this to be pitched up by Lyndon James. Just looking to try and get Shane Snater dragging it to leg. Here comes James from our end of the ground. Tall, blonde hair and Snater again backs away. Um, there's a, a game within a game here. He's trying to force it through the offside. Lyndon James trying to get him to hit to the leg side. But at the moment, these two Essex batters are, are winning this particular battle. It's interesting that Knots have gone with Lyndon James rather than the more experienced Brett Hutton or Dane Patterson. Yeah, the loneliest man on the field at the moment is the wicketkeeper, Joe Clark. Uh, no slip now. Nobody anywhere near him. James in to Walter Snater on 45. He's hit this one high up in the air. Now Joe Clark is running after it. Can he get underneath it with the gloves? He did and spilt it. He was running back towards the pavilion almost uh, herring straight behind him but then Presumably the ball began to swirl a little bit. He had uh, a complete 360-degree turn, got the gloves to it, and out they popped. Just as I was about to say, that's his fifth catch of the innings because he's uh, pretty much had a, a largely unblemished match. Joe Clark he scored a fine century in Nottinghamshire's first innings. He's uh, taken the six opportunities that have come his way, two in the first innings and four in this, but uh, he'd love to have hung on to that one. As would the bowler, Lyndon James, who comes in to Slater, uh, they ran two again one up in the air, another opportunity and this time it is caught 
down at long leg and uh, that is the end of Shane Snater. We'll have a little look at Adam Rossington in a moment, just see if he stays there or walks off. 370 for nine. Snater has been well caught by Dylan Pennington. Lyndon James gets his third wicket of the innings. Fine knock from Snater. Needed uh, to get on with it this morning and has done very nicely indeed. 47 from 46 balls. 370 for nine means that Essex's lead is 330. Yeah, I'd like to have seen Essex pull the plug just then myself, mm. but uh, we're going to see Jamie Porter come in. And Essex certainly have uh, added runs very, very quickly indeed. They were at 3.29 overnight, so they've added 41. We're only in the sixth over of the morning, as Jamie Porter now makes his way out to the middle. Yes, the previous delivery, we had the, the drop catch of Joe Clark, who, who did the hard bit and uh, sprinted away, got underneath the ball, but it's always very difficult when it's coming over your shoulder. And uh, he seemed to have it in his gloves, but it spills out. But then uh, good catch there uh, at uh, long leg, running in from Pennington to, in the end, dive forward and get his hands underneath the ball. So a wicket there for Lyndon James. And Essex at 370 for nine, have this 330 lead. Gone compared to yesterday, uh, uh, the ferocious winds, uh, yeah. things have really calmed right down. That may or may not be good news in the overall context of how much play we get, because I think those uh, strong winds did succeed in blowing the clouds over nice and quickly uh, yesterday until late in the day. I think we'll be all right, Paul. I good. think we'll be all right. Hope you're right. Uh, Mark the Mod's been in touch from uh, Seven Oaks down in Kent. He's a Knott's follower, one of our regulars. Can't remember too many successful 300-plus chases by Knott's in recent years, Dave. Uh, and then he throws in Can You. I'll have, I'll have, a, I'll have a bit of a think as we go on, uh, Mark, especially when we know how many Knott's will require New man, that is uh, Jamie Porter. And of course, he's on strike in years gone by. Um, they certainly would have crossed. The ball was up in the air long enough for Rossington to get down the other end as James comes in, bowls. And uh, Jamie Porter maybe heard before he left the pavilion. Uh, <laughs> it's hit one ball for four and he's run up. Well, I was just going to say, he might have heard Paul say, um, can be a little bit stodgy, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> Now, I like that from Essex. They knew that there was one ball left in the over, and rather just than just declaring, they sort of sent him out with a little bit of a free hit. There's one ball left in the over. We're going to declare at the end of the over. Go out and see what you can do. And that's, and that's good, because often sides just walk off halfway through an unfinished over when they're going to declare, but that's good. Essex have declared 374 for nine, so Knotts will need 3-3-4. Three, three, 374 for nine declared. Adam Rossington finished on 39 not out. I wonder if that's the end of his involvement, if his finger is damaged. As I say, we did see Michael Pepper doing the uh, wicket keeping warm ups but this morning. Shane Snater caught Pennington Bowl James for 47. That was 370 for nine. A wicket for Lyndon James, uh, giving him figures of three for 85. Out came Jamie Porter, whacked his first ball down the ground and then off they went. Now the board says currently 90 overs remain in the day but we'll lop two off so 88 overs 335 required in 88 overs Paul. Um, that's a it's a tough ask for knots, but again, as I've been saying over the last 24 hours or so to anybody who's asked me there's the duck it factor. He does score quickly and if he bats if he bats for three or four hours, Knotts will get close. I'm not saying he's a one-man team. I'm not saying others couldn't get Knotts there, but Duckett scores his runs so quickly, it makes it easy for his batting partners as well at the other end just to keep rotating the strike and getting him back on strike. Expect more from Simon Harmer than we've seen in the game so far. Um, I think he will come into play, but it's set up to be a cracker, isn't it? Let's hope it is a cracker, whatever happens. No, absolutely right. It was a good shot, that, from Porter, actually, because everybody else has been whacking it into the leg side, but he plays with a st straight bat. Normally, uh, he comes in as a night watchman. Um, Sam Cook did that duty in this particular game, but Jamie Porter has been known to figure in such partnerships. I remember he had a partnership with Simon Harmer at the Oval, um, not last season, I think it was the season before. The partnership was worth 40, and Harmer got all 40. <laughs> Porter um, blocked an end off for about eight or nine overs. So he is actually well organised. Normally, we see him playing defensively so that he's keeping um, 
a better batsman than him company but on this occasion he knew he had one ball he'll have been told that before he uh, set off and uh, couldn't have done a great deal better with it it's a lovely shot with a straight bat straight down the ground so there we are 335 in 85 it's sort of just under four and over roughly um yeah 3.8 i've just uh yeah 3. i just 8. pinged it in 88 overs uh, i think they've got so like you know like i sort of pointed out a little earlier should it get squeaky for Essex towards the end of the day and they perhaps need one, two or three wickets uh, and we get a full day in, they would have the opportunity of that second new ball and eight overs with the second new ball. So that, uh, that might become a factor uh, later on. Yeah, I think from an Essex point of view, they couldn't have written the script any better than how it's actually turned out because uh, the exactly the scenario you've painted, uh, Dave, from a long way back has come about. Mm. They've got that facility to have eight overs with a second new ball. Obviously, that would depend on all 88 overs being available, and, and the forecast I've seen suggests a danger period between 2 o'clock and 4 o'clock in the afternoon, where other estimations of a 10% likelihood of rain, in other words, 90% likely there won't be in, in those periods, but uh, the Met Office, I notice, are uh, uh, suggesting that there might be a 40% chance of rain in the afternoon. Um, I shall try and get hold of my old mate uh, a little later on when, uh, when when he's up and about and we get a gap. But uh, I did uh, put on social media this morning. It's uh, it's the 65th birthday of my old mate Franklin Stevenson. Uh, real honour and a privilege to do his book with him a few years ago. My song shall be cricket. Still, uh, still available. A terrific read, even if I say so myself. But about a terrific man, a terrific cricketer. And um, it's Franklin's birthday today, so I'm sure he'll be enjoying it with uh, a nice cold drink or two. And a lot of people uh, kindly taking the trouble to uh, to get in touch and uh, share their memories of Franklin. The last man, of course, Paul, to do the double. That'll never oh, happen again. tremendous. Uh, 1988. And Nobody else is ever going to get 100 wickets in a season and 1,000 runs because they just don't play enough games. But uh, and, and he bowled the best slower ball Yorker <laughs> you've ever seen. It would disappear out of the batsman's sight. And he'd think, oh, he's bowled me a beamer and duck. And, uh, in fact, it was a very gentle delivery that would drop down and clean bowl or some rather in Paris batsman. I wonder if I might just run through well, a few I was, I was just going to say on that, of course, the one that's been referred to a lot this morning was Brian Hardy in the final, the Eddie Hemmings yes, final. Yep. He, he got Brian Hardy yep. um, early on. Um, just got BBC Radio Nottingham in my ears, Paul, so we might just have to yep. do a quick update yep, for that's those. All right. but, uh, um, clear cut, uh, thanking us for the commentary. Keep up the good work, he says, and he says uh, nice to uh, 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 see the... Um, uh, the achievements of Franklin Stevenson being recognised this morning. Um, the bell has gone. So we'll be... Uh, so I think we've still got five minutes or so, Paul, if, yep. you, if you have got a, an email yes, or two I've got rather, get stuck into. Yes, I've got a lot. Yeah, uh, great. Uh, delighted to say. Uh, Richard Smith, first of all. Thank you, Richard. Enjoying your commentary, as usual, he says, regarding the issue with the oversized bat used by Cushy which was tested and rejected by the umpires yesterday. I'm firstly surprised that an oversized bat is made by bat manufacturers, and secondly, that the coaches and staff weren't aware of this. It's now possible that Essex could receive a points penalty. Yes, we wait for that one. Might wait a number of years, actually. <laughs> but uh, uh, Jack Carey uh, says, Good morning, guys. Heads his email, What a game. Waking up in a very damp Nottingham, I'm surprised we're starting on time. Having not missed a ball of this game, I was at the ground for days one and two. We've had a brilliant game of red ball cricket with lots of momentum changes. Quite agree with you there, Jack. Looking forward to tuning in for my university lectures to hopefully follow and Essex win. Thank you for all your entertainment over the last three days. It's been a pleasure, Jack, on behalf of uh, Don Topley, Dave Bracegirdle and all those who've uh, joined us over the days. Um, Pete Haynes says, uh, hello commentary team, at what point do you think Essex should declare? Obviously you sent that a few moments ago, and uh, well, pretty much I think we can say, Pete, uh, exactly when they did. Um, they were sensible just to use what was an entitlement to uh, uh, one ball that was left of an over where the wicket had just gone down and uh, Porter hit that one remaining ball for four and then the declaration came and now Knotts need 335 to win in 88 minimum overs. Uh, Edward Eamon says, 
Any update regarding potential points deductions for Cushy's bat seems precedent was set where Durham lost 10 points. Irony that the Essex CEO announced the rule changes restricting bat sizes when he was at the MCC. Yes, John Stevenson uh, in his days uh, there. Um, Watching from afar, an uh, email from Ben Horton who says, have followed the highlights through the week here in Western Australia, but with all three results still on the table, can't not watch. All the best, he says, Ben, Essex-born, Scotland-bred, and just departed to Oz. Uh, great to hear from you. We've got the umpires in the middle. Ground staff have... Uh done their work as ever they'll uh, only have needed to be a little bit of brushing away there and they'll I'm sure have refreshed the white lines just giving it a little bit of a light roll the umpires Tom Longley and uh, Steve O'Shaughnessy just having a chat in the middle together waiting for the players um, I didn't earlier um, make reference to uh, the interview that Calvin Harrison did with uh, the Knots media team before play started today and first time I've seen it in that interview we saw a replay of the Calvin Harrison wicket, the big leg spinner that bowled uh, Jordan Cox on the first day, as a replay from the umpire's coat. Now, I, I wasn't aware that the county clubs were able to get access of those uh, of, of that footage, so that is terrific, and certainly if it's something that uh, we'll be able to see more and more of, that is a tremendous view. Saw a replay this morning, Paul, I know you were out of the room at the time, of the leg spinner's wicket from the umpire's coat. Because yeah, fascinating. As you, as you know, they all wear cameras now. Well, as you rightly predicted to me some time ago, Michael Pepper is duly donning the wicket-keeping gloves. That is not the shape of Adam Rossington out there, so uh, I can say that without having to get the binoculars out or anything. And we're going to see the first ball bowled by Jamie Porter to Hasib Hamid. We have three slips and a shortish mid-wicket. The attacking field here as Porter is in and bowls from the Radcliffe Road end, tucked away off the pads, and there will be two runs from this uh, first ball. As there's uh, a chase out there for, for Rose Cushy, and uh, two for no wicket, needing 335 in 88 overs at 3.8. We've uh, heard from um, Mark Siskind. Uh, good morning, Mark. You say enjoying the live feed here in Israel, where I can say without doubt that the weather is better than at Nottingham. Keep up the good work. Thanks very much indeed for that, Mark. Porter's on his way again. Plane flying overhead. Nottingham Airport nearby, or East Midlands rather, as this ball is played away off the pads, going out towards the boundary. Lively start this because it's gone over the boundary. Two deliveries gone. Six runs on the board. Hasib Hamid has set out as if he means business. <laughs> and another 3.29 are needed in a minimum of 87.4. Yeah, when, I, when I, of course, I said uh, Ben Duckett would go out there and score at a high lick, I, I obviously meant Hasib Hamid. Now <laughs> 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 well, he's got off to a fine start, hasn't he? He has. The emails are absolutely flying in. Got another six or seven already as uh, Jamie Porter's in. Bowls to Hasib, who plays this ball... Uh, into the offside for no run. We've heard from um, uh, Mr. Jones. He signs himself. Oh, it's Alex Jones. Thanks, Alex. Great to watch the stream of the new season. It's now 12 months a year of Lord Bracegirdle. Uh, <laughs> great not commentary over the winter. Oh, and now six months of cricket. Perfect, he says. Thank you. You're very, very kind. Very kind indeed. Sure, it's well deserved as Porter's on his way. Three slips crouch, bowls, strays down leg side, very nicely taken by Michael Pepper. Might have just flicked the pad there, flung himself to his left. He's a tall lad for a wicketkeeper, uh, Michael Pepper. He's roughly six foot two or three and um, very nice chap actually. Uh, plays principally white ball cricket, but no slouch with the bat on the uh, occasions where he does play red ball. Six for no wicket. First over, target 335. Porter bowls. That's a good delivery, well played. Got the respect it deserved. Hasib Hamid, the man on strike. Let's continue to rattle through the splendid tranche of emails. Um, Tony Plow says, uh, Hello from Australia. Really enjoying the coverage from Melbourne, Australia. Looks set for a great finish. We'll remain tuned in for what will hopefully be an exciting finish in our early hours. Fingers crossed the weather holds up. Thanks again. Yeah, absolutely. Lovely email. Thank you very much. 
Can I just thank uh, Kirsty and Aaron for the first time today who, uh, who look after the, the live stream side of things. So all these comments saying how much people are uh, very much enjoying watching the pictures and following the game from afar will uh, we'll direct it in the direction of Kirsty and Aaron and of course the fabulous camera crew once again out in the cold all around Trent Bridge to bring you the pictures. Final ball of this opening over. Been a good one so far for Nottinghamshire. Porter bowls to Hasib, who just plays the ball back down the pitch. Six for no wicket. The first over ends. Another 87 to come. Target to bear in mind, 335. And we have Mike Patton emailing us, and he says, Hello from Dallas, Texas. Classic JR country. He says, Enjoying listening to hopefully an Essex victory today as we await hopefully clear skies for the total solar eclipse at 1.40 here in Texas a total eclipse no less best uh, uh, wishes he says Mike uh, Patton and how nice to hear from all these various far flung places in the world we've already had Australia, Israel and now uh, Dallas, Texas yeah, it'll be, what, what, where are we now so we're uh, about 20 to 12 what would, what would Texas be 6-7 hours behind us so very, Something very like early that. in the morning so Ben Duckett to Face his first delivery. It's going to be Sam Cook, and of course, <laughs> this game we've, we've sort of mentioned everything we've seen over the first three days. But how how poor of us not to mention Sam Cook with a hat trick, a hat trick on the first round of matches. He bowls to Ben Duckett, who's away. First ball sprints down to the other end. Porter comes into field and does so with admirable speed, preventing a second run. But Duckett is away as well. He's on one. Hamid six seven without loss. Mark the Mod says um, Dave, I'm pretty sure I was there when Franklin did the double. Just going to go and, uh, and look up the uh, the day. Uh, yeah, it was end of the season. It, it, I think he got 15-16 wickets in the match. A century in each innings to complete the double. And Amazing. Not, and not lost. And of course you had another quite wonderful world-class player who also did the double here. And that was Richard Hadley. Um, who had his whole season mapped out game by game. Meads on strike. Oh, lovely delivery. This goes through uh, to the wicket keeper. Yes, Hadley did it in 84, and Franklin sort of took inspiration from that and uh, said, right, well, well I'm, I'm going to play, what, 20 first-class matches? It's only five um, It's only five wickets a match. I'll get me 100 wickets easy. He told everybody that when he, when he, when he first arrived. Um, but then he went into the last match still needing 230 runs, so smashed a century at each innings. Extraordinary player, absolutely extraordinary. Seven without loss, not as uh, Seba Mead is struck on the pad. I fancy from here it might just have been drifting down the leg side, and in truth the appeal was stifled as soon as it had begun to form in the mouth of Sam Cook. There is an argument, uh, Dave, and maybe it's because I'm an Essex man I say this, but the, an argument that the 1984 County Championship produced the greatest finish of all time, and it was between Essex and Nottinghamshire. Essex had already finished their campaign, and uh, we'll come back to that after this ball. Do we have to? <laughs> Hamid is on six, and uh, this one's beautifully played by Hamid through the offside for four he's uh, larruped that one into the gap on the offside and the Bolton born Nottinghamshire skipper already in double figures 11 without loss and Amid's got 10 of them mm, lovely shot as you say yes that 84 finish I remember I was playing a game of 10 pin bowling at the time and uh, as it came to a climax because I couldn't get the radio reception um, it was below ground the, uh, the bowling alley I went upstairs and heard Henry Blofeld's description of the final over where Mike Bohr, I think it was, looked <laughs> to be taking Nottinghamshire to victory off the final over of the whole championship. Next ball that sees uh, me just having to readjust very quickly. That one was a uh, quickish delivery from Cork, pitched up to him and I mean, initially, I think, looking to drive, and then he had to uh, just change and defend it out onto the leg side at the last second. And Bohr, having already taken about... 16 runs off the first five balls of the over would have won Notts the title uh, had the last ball gone for six which it would have done had not the Somerset substitute fieldsman raced round the boundary and plucked it out of thin air extraordinary finish there's Pennington bowls and Demead drags this um, a little bit of 
pad involved as well. Wasn't crisply off the middle to mid on. No run. 11 without loss after two overs. Nottinghamshire here. The target 335 in 88 overs. So every a scrap of information that Paul Newton has, uh, has just read out. Absolutely correct. But who was the substitute fielder that caught that, him? That, that, I can't remember his name, but if you can tell me, I'll be delighted. I've just, uh, I've, I've just had to pull it up myself. Richard Ollis, his name That's was. That's right. You're not he, an easy name to no, remember. He only played uh, 37 first-class matches. Um, a Bristolian, born in Clifton. And... Uh, yeah, he took the he took the catch as Mike Bore thought he'd uh, swung for glory, thought he'd got six, and a tall man, uh, Richard Ollis, took the catch above his head on the fence. If it had gone for six, Knotts would have been county champions. He caught it, and so Essex were able to celebrate yeah. yet another yet another championship success. Essex won the title with a little bit of help from Graham Gooch, who was banned from international cricket that year, and helped himself to the little matter of 2,559 first-class runs. Um, here is Porter uh, coming around the wicket to bowl to Duckett and this ball is played firmly but for no run to Shane Snaefer at mid on and in the third over of a target of 335 knots have begun in sprightly fashion with 11 for no wicket Hamid currently outscoring Ben Duckett mind you he's had much more of the strike but Hamid has a very well made 10 and Duckett just underway with a single Bob the Coventry Pie says, game on, maybe, perhaps, if it doesn't rain. Yeah, oh. I think it's true. Porter's in. Bowles duck it, uh, hits the ball again to Snater at deep mid on again. There will be no run. He also finished in brackets, or if we don't collapse. Um, Mark the Mod has been back. He's, he has looked it up. Um, Franklin, yes, in that last match against Yorkshire, 117 and 111. And it was 11 wickets in the game, yes. Uh, as I was his uh, biographer, autobiographer, I, <laughs> I should have remembered, but uh, it was uh, it was a, it was a year or two ago. But uh, what a what a match! Yes, indeed, what a performance! And uh, this is four runs to Duckett. Lovely timing. I just let the ball come onto his bat and stroked it between um, mid wicket and mid arm to the boundary. It's a shortish boundary on that side. So once it uh, beat the infield, it was always likely to go all the way. 15 for no wicket, further 320 required. And we're just in the third over of a minimum 88, weather permitting. Could be a long day for the 52-year-old. <laughs> He's already getting nervous about this run, Jase. Crikey. Porter. From the Radcliffe Road end, Bowles. And this time, Duckett plays it for the third time so far this over to Shane Snater at mid on. Again, there will be no run. Of course, in the early stages here, whilst this ball is uh, it's probably at its best, um, it's also at its best for the batting side. Not someone might well find it harder later on to score runs with any great freedom or regularity as the, uh, as the ball softens. So... They're certainly making the most of this early opportunity as well, as as, as I expected Duckett to do. The bonus thus far, and I know it's very early on, is that uh, Asiba Mead has got up and running quickly. He's on 10, Duckett on 15, as a pile of sawdust is just brought from uh, the end of his run by Porter and popped down in one of the softer areas. Porter's on his way again. And bowls to Duckett. Oh, and bowled him! Duckett's off stump is removed and uh, what a breakthrough for Essex there as Jamie Porter just went straight through Duckett's defences, didn't really move the feet there and uh, well it's well bowled and uh, then, uh, then Duckett departs disconsolately for five, clean bowled by Porter, just take the opportunity to read uh, an email from Millie Delane who says, happy to have had so much play compared to other games around. Nice to have the commentary back, helping to get through this Monday uh, back at work. Thanks for keeping us all entertained. Long may it continue. And she says, I'd like to think Porter is going to brag about his 400 strike rate in the dressing room. Would be great if Essex can get a win to kick off their campaign. All the best, Millie. Well, certainly um, Essex have done their chances a heap of good by getting rid of Duckett so early. Yeah, I think if Porter's got anything to brag, uh, brag about, it'll be that delivery. Terrific ball and uh, the, uh, the the big wicket, I guess. I mean, every wicket is counts equally, as we, as we all know, but Duckett can score his runs so, so quickly and it would have been really damaging for Essex had he had a, uh, a lengthy stay at the crease, but that's gone and now Nottinghamshire have 
maybe just got to reassess a little bit and look elsewhere for any drive towards the finishing line. Long way to go, 85 overs, but they are 15 for one, and their England man, or one of their England men, of course, Masiba Mead, is uh, what, two years uh, since he last played for England, but uh, Ben Duckett, the current England player, scores his run so quickly, it's not going to get any more in this match. Gone for five. Yeah, very good delivery indeed from Porter, and uh, memories there of his, his particularly outstanding season when Essex had just been promoted in 2016 and then went on to win the whole mm. shebang in 2017 and uh, Jamie got 74 wickets that season and he got a lot of wickets in that way knocking people's stumps over very fine bowler yeah Don was talking about this earlier in the match he was county championship player of the year wasn't he made a few England squads yeah. without getting on the park and ben Slater is the new man who's made his way out to the middle left-handed Ben replaces left-handed Ben he fell, uh, he fell cheaply, Paul, in the first inning, so he'll be looking to make a contribution. That was um, the season 2017 when um, it was the first year that uh, Essex is great spinner. I'll just break in because Porter's on his way in. Bowls and it's driven into the offside and it's got past the infield. Chase back, it won't go to the boundary. They're coming back for a second. The skipper, Tom Wesley, does the retrieving and the score to 17 for one. So... Slater away to a good start. I was just going to say it's the year that Simon Harmer joined Essex for the first time and he narrowly failed to overtake Jamie Porter that year with 72 wickets. But Porter's a tremendous character. Uh, he's had his ups and downs, but he always comes back and uh, shows us that he's far from finished and he'll, be, he'll prize that wicket, as you were saying, Dave, of uh, Ben Duckett. 17 for one on the board, target 335, a further 85 overs remain. So Ben Slater out there, alongside Seba Mead, former Derbyshire man Slater. A Mead, former Lancashire player, of course, has caught bowls to a Mead who just defends this one down uh, just behind him. And Matt Critchley comes and collects and sends it on its way back. A Mead, 27 years of age now, made his uh, Nottinghamshire debut in that behind closed doors uh, COVID summer of August 2020. This is his 45th Nottinghamshire match, his third as captain. Played 10 test matches for England and last year he only averaged 28, didn't score a century. As uh, This one comes back, cuts him in two, goes through to Michael Pepper. It was his leanest year in terms of runs for Hamid since uh, moving to Trent Bridge. But uh, he'll be hoping just to recapture some of his former glories in this innings. That was a terrific delivery mm. from Sam Cook. Um, went clean through the defences of uh, Hamid. Essex with three slips. And I think we're going to have the same three fieldsmen in those positions through the season. Dean Elgar taking Alistair Cook's place at one. Harmer two. Critchley at three. It's Cook. Bowls to Hamid. Forces it into the cover region. There's no run. Yeah, Elgar actually spilled a Seba Mead in the first innings went very quickly above his head it was an instinct it was a reflex action to thrust his hand up and got both hands to it but it, the ball burst through the uh, through the palms and went down to, to third man for a couple of runs and Mead went soon afterwards but uh, that was potentially a, an important moment and Mead made 34 in the first innings it's Cook bowling to him and he Defense. It was Porter who got a meet out eventually, caught behind by Adam Rossington, who, in case you're just joining us, isn't on the field. Michael Pepper is the sub and uh, has taken the gloves. I, I don't know if they have to ask the permission of the uh, of the other side if um, if a specialist wicketkeeper can come on and take the wicket keeping gloves. But generally, there's uh, there's never an issue, is there? Whichever sides are involved in things like that. 17 for one. Cook from the. Stuart Broad and bowl him as well. Terrific stuff this from the Essex Seamers and Haseba Mead loses his off stump. Both openers have now gone. 17 for two. There's been times in this game when Essex have been slightly on the back foot. Nottinghamshire building a first innings lead of 40, which looked as if it was going to be far more until Sam Cook picked up a hat-trick. Bang, bang, bang. Well, he's also doing damage to Nottinghamshire's hopes here on day four. Amid out for ten, bowled by Cook. 
at the crease for just a quarter of an hour, faced 16 balls and not 17 for two. And suddenly, Paul, it looks a long old day for the home side. Well, it does, potentially, yes. Um, far too soon to write Nottinghamshire off, but obviously uh, it's a great start for Essex. Terrific bowling from Cook, and uh, having watched Sam Cook, who also made a contribution to that uh, year in which Essex went uh, straight up from Division 2, uh, won winning that title, to taking the Division 1 title in 2017. And Sam Cook made his debut in September of that year. Um, the then... Uh, Deputy coach for Essex, Anthony McGrath, who of course uh, virtually ever since is now just about the longest running coach in the, on the county circuit, Anthony McGrath, but he was number two to Chris Silverwood at that time, but he assured Chris Silverwood that he'd seen enough of Sam Cook to tell him he was ready to go straight into the side, and in just four games in September of that year, he took two five-wicket hauls, something he's made a habit of ever since. He is a magnificent bowler, and you'd have to think he's got to be on the selector's short this when Jimmy Anderson finally departs the scene of course Stuart Broad already has and he's not of express pace but he, that was a distinctly quick delivery as was the one previously that beat Hamid it, it had slightly been coming and it's worth remembering as much as the England selectors can't get enough of the real express merchants at 90 miles an hour plus, the guys who take all the wickets are your Andersons and Broads, uh, a cool 1,300 between them. Fabulous start this for Essex. Still got uh, one ball left in only the fourth over and they've removed two of Nottinghamshire's uh, big guns. Another one out in the middle now, Joe Clark could have made a really good case for Joe Clark dropping down the order a little bit as uh, he's struck on the pad first ball they're asking but uh, the umpire's already shaking his head and says that's the over good start though from Cook he's got a wicket here two overs one maiden one for five Joe Clark has been on the field for much of the game with the gloves on of course the Nottinghamshire wicket keeper for this match with Tom Moores not playing scored a century in the first innings batted for a long time and as soon as he was out he just maybe he was thinking everybody was thinking well he'll have a little bit of time to uh, put his feet up now uh, ahead of another stint in the field but of course Cook went bang 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 with his hat trick and Joe Clark was back out there so you know, you, you could have made a case maybe for Matthew Montgomery and or Jack Haynes or and or uh, Lyndon James uh, coming in ahead of Joe Clark here, but uh, clearly a man in form in the first innings and clearly a man who loves batting, wants to get out there. Tell you what, I think he's going to remain that true to that stat that he's been out there for nearly the whole match, if not so to win this game. A great deal depends on Joe Clark now as the first ball of a new Jamie Porter over is played to mid-off the Essex skipper Tom Wesley Fields, 17 for two in the fifth over. Bob's doing a rain dance already, he says. <laughs> <laughs> Keep the faith, Bob. We've heard from uh, Harry White who says after Essex's collapse in the middle yesterday, they did very well to get near 400. Do you think they've put it out of Nottingham's, Nottingham's hands and so the Knox will play for a draw or will they push for a win? Um, well, it's Porter in bowls and uh, this ball is played to mid on. I think Essex are, are always going to push for a win here. Nottinghamshire have really got to hope they can sort of get through to lunch with losing no more than one more wicket. Yeah, batting sides in these uh, circumstances, you always hear them say, we, you know, we don't sort of look at the bigger picture, chasing 335 in a day. We're looking at sessions and, and indeed segments of sessions. Indeed, Porter Bowles. Good delivery, but well played by Slater into the offside. And Jordan Cox does the fielding and score remaining at 17 for two. Target 335 are in the fifth over. Still with uh, listeners on Five Sports Extra here. Um, if you're just joining us, maybe jumped in the car and uh, and switched on. This is Nottinghamshire against Essex Division One match, which thankfully has escaped much of the bad weather that's intervened across the country. Not 17 for two. Porter bowls and uh, well. Batsman would have us believe he was uh, taking the bat away there, but I'm not totally convinced by that. But it was a good delivery from Porter that certainly was very close to uh, tempting uh, Slater into an indiscretion, and uh, he was close to edging it. 17 for two. Yes. 
wonderful start this from Essex not set to score 335 in 88 overs they did bat on for a little time this morning before the declaration came at 374 for nine. Forty bowls again played into the offside and again there will be no run again Jordan Cox does the fielding and of course it th there's no greater sight really Dave for a, a, a bowler in an opening spell to clean bowl good batsman opening batsman both of whom uh, have played for England uh, you were saying Hasib Hamid with 10 tests and Ben Duckett uh, wonderful innings that he played out in India during the winter so they're good wickets to get and the clean bowl them both is some achievement for Messrs Porter and Cook and the next ball will produce at least one run as it's just angled away into the offside it is just a single and that is the end of the Jamie Porter over his third he uh, clean bowled Ben Duckett and uh, Sam Cook subsequently has clean bowled Hasid Hamid and Nottinghamshire needing 335 to win in a minimum 88 overs are 18 for 2 in 5 yeah, Ben Slater will be on strike Slater moved from Derbyshire towards the back end of the 2018 summer made his debut at the Oval against Surrey this is his 64th Nottinghamshire match has 8 hundreds for Nottinghamshire 12 across all first class matches uh, including his spell with Derbyshire has a best of 225 not out played against Essex 10 times 10 previous matches and only a top score of 60 against Essex. Today would be a good day to beat that personal milestone. I think there was... Uh, well, there's, well, there's nobody moving behind the arm, Ben, because there's nobody there. Um, but he just backed away for a second. Not ready, but now Cook round the wicket. Bowls to Ben Slater, who shoulders arms, and it goes through to the stand-in substitute wicketkeeper, Michael Pepper. Elgar at first slip. Sends the ball on its way. Critchley at third and Harmer at second. Harmer with his hands in his pockets, keeping them warm. Just having a lengthy chat about last night's television, no doubt. Or maybe what's for pudding today. Been a decent crowd in all four days. There's Cook Bowles and Slater squared up, pushing in the V, pushing straight back towards the bowler, but comes off an outside edge to backward point and there's no run yeah one of the difficulties for the knots batsman is particularly as each bowler is taking a wicket but uh, Porter and Cook are a, they bowl very well in tandem and they really sustain the pressure on opposition top order batting Cook finished with four wickets in the first innings. So he's now got five in the match. And this is edged and caught. He's now got six in the match. Harmer with a good low catch. That went very, very quickly. And Slater has gone for three. And this is uh, an absolutely disastrous start for Nottinghamshire. Any uh, thoughts of maybe chasing down that 335? You'd imagine are already very much on the back burner. Two wickets for Cook, uh, one for Jamie Porter, and the top three, Amid Duckett and Slater, have all gone with only 18 on the board. This is uh, fabulous bowling from a side that just knows how to win county championship matches. And they've come here with dogged determination. They could have battered on longer and longer today, just uh, taking it even further away from Nottinghamshire. But gave themselves 88 overs to bowl out knots and so far it looks as if they won't need anywhere near half of that knots 18 for three as slater following his um, first inning score of nine has uh, has gone for three second time around well simon harmer in addition to his uh, wonderful bowling and um, useful batting is also quite outstanding fielder he always prefers to be at second slip and more catches, without a doubt, go to second slip over a period of time than first or third. And uh, as you rightly said, he made what was far from an easy catch because it went very low. Look, uh, just a piece of cake really there. He's taken so many blinding catches over the years for Essex. He's got big hands, great judgment, keeps the head very still. And knots at 18 for three have uh, really got, got a battle on now to avoid defeat, assuming that uh, we don't lose a lot of overs to rain, as uh, Montgomery has now made his way out to the middle. 
Yes, Matthew Montgomery playing his uh, 20th first-class match, scored uh, just over a 1,000 first-class runs, two centuries, high score of 178. Right-hander, he's on strike, South African-born, facing Cook, that's the first ball go through to the keeper. Do an update for Radio Nottingham listeners in a moment. That first hour absolutely flown by with lots of action. Essex rattling along for the first 20 minutes before declaring and then picking up these three Nottinghamshire wickets in relatively quick succession has not slid from 15 without loss to 18 for three. Nottingham should be very pleased they played the extra batter. Jack Haynes due in at six and Lyndon James at seven. It's Montgomery steers this to backward point, no run. Yes, Nottingham should have had a very disappointing start to their uh, second innings. They've been set to score 335 in 88 overs, but any thoughts of an unlikely victory may be already on the back burner as Sam Cook, who got a hat-trick in the first innings, already taken two wickets. Jamie Porter in the other. Hamid, Duckett and Slater have gone. Knots in pursuit of 335 are 18 for three. As Cook bowls to young Monty, Matthew Montgomery gets a stride in, defends it capably and competently and under cloudy skies here in Nottingham, Sam Cook ends another successful over, three overs, two maidens, two for five to him, Porter's got one for 13 and Nottinghamshire 18 for three here on BBC Five Sports Extra, BBC Radio Nottingham, BBC Essex and I know many of you follow the pictures on the live stream with uh, with our commentary here from Trent Bridge. I hope you're enjoying the coverage wherever you are. Email from The Grumbler who says, Hi Paul, surely that was Shazball from Essex this morning. And uh, Jane Snater a reference there. More seriously, how important in modern cricket is quick run scoring? Walter Snater and Rossington have turned the game in Essex's favour. Well, he sent his email a little while ago, he says, but Duckett could turn it back towards Knotts, and indeed he could have done, but he was clean bowled by Jamie Porter, and since then Knotts have lost two more wickets and are struggling at 18 for three. Beginning of the seventh over, Porter bowling to Clark, who steers the ball into the covers, and there is no run there, so the... Inning so far is Duckett, bold Porter, five, Hamid, bold Cook, ten, and Slater called Harmer, bold Cook, three, wickets at 15 in the third, over 17 in the fourth, and 18 in the sixth. So this is now the seventh, and Porter passes on by Tom Lungley from the Radcliffe Road End bowls. Uh, slight suspicion of the outside part of the bat there, but head right over the ball, all credit to... Joe Clark coming forward, trying to prevent uh, Porter's ability to move the ball late from taking effect there. Uh, good technique from Clark, who is yet to get off the mark, as is Matt Montgomery. Yes, an absolutely ideal board for Essex and their supporters. Clark, Nort, Montgomery, Nort, partnership, Nort. Porter bowls, and Clark on the back foot this time. Plays a good backward defensive shot down the pitch and there is no run. Emails to bbcessexcricket at gmail.com. We hear from um, Jonathan Griffiths who says, Just thought I'd say thank you for uh, so much for the coverage. I'm a university student and it's getting me through my horrid dissertation. You have more to say but we'll take this next ball from Porter. Great to have university students interested in county cricket as this uh, ball moves away off the pitch. Clark plays at it. Can't be blamed for that. Superb delivery from Porter. Goes through without taking the edge to replacement wicketkeeper Michael Pepper with Adam Rossington suffering with a finger injury. Uh, Jonathan continues, I've been surviving on the pitiful scraps of the IPL and I can honestly say I'd rather watch a cautious leave on a good line than a whole season of the vulgar ostentation and crass advertisement 
characteristic of that garish circus of excesses. <laughs> Brilliant la- use of language there, Jonathan, as this ball is played into the onside for no run, Clark <laughs> facing Porter. Don't you just want to read his dissertation now? Yes, definitely. <laughs> Let's just have that last season, uh, last sentence again. He says, I'd rather watch a cautious leave on a good line than a whole season of the vulgar ostentation and crass advertisement characteristic of that garish circus of excesses. Uh, a lovely description of the IPL. I don't much care for Rupe, Aramco or CEAT tyres as we uh, see the next ball from Porter on its way. Um, well played by Clark. Very good defensive technique into the offside. No run there. Uh, Maiden over, but well played by Clark. 18 for three and seven overs, Nottinghamshire. And he continues and finishes his email saying, nor those hideously agricultural swipes they call good cricket. Thanks, too, to Zeus, Indra, Thor, and any other weather gods for their good grace. Uh, Regards, (laughs) Jonathan. Yep, superb stuff. Lovely to hear from you, and uh, do keep listening. Yes, thank you, Jonathan. Uh, clearly not a fan of uh, some of the short format cricket going on. Uh, Cook to continue. Uh, just to tell you now, we've got the second um, in speech marks here, uh, or inverted commas, uh, second result of this round of matches, and I'm afraid it's another abandonment. They're unable to get on at Chesterley Street for the fourth day running as uh, in comes Cook, lovely delivery, shapes away from Matthew Montgomery and into the gloves of Pepper. So no play on any of the four days, um, just down the road in Division 2 between Derbyshire and Gloucestershire, match abandoned, and now in Division 1, Durham and Hampshire, match abandoned. You feel for well, you feel for everybody, feel for all the Durham supporters locally, but just imagine if you're a Hampshire supporter desperate for the start of the cricket season and uh, you've made the long journey up there the long drive four days of expenses hotels meals and all the rest of it next ball on its way and uh, wider the pegs goes through to the cricket all the way up to chester the street for four days the start of the cricket season not a ball bold elsewhere in division one they've not started on day four at old trafford where lancashire and defending champions surrey should have played one of the uh, one of the most keenly um, contested matches in this round you would imagine Surrey 15 without loss replying to Lancashire's 202 with uh, four wickets in that Lancashire innings for former Essex player Dan Lawrence as Cook is in and Montgomery again defensive not started today which is a shame because there was a good game brewing at Edgbaston between Warwickshire and Worcestershire centuries in both innings to Cashy Valley 237 for two Worcestershire they lead Warwickshire by 264 there, but wet stuff in the West Midlands. So where there is play, apart from Trent Bridges at Canterbury, where Kent are 10 for 2 in their second innings. Just wonder if Somerset might just be able to pull off a win there, because Kent 10 for 2 still trails Somerset by 105, and a first Somerset wicket for Jake Ball as uh, Montgomery lets this go through. Uh, Moyei and... Uh, Ben Compton, former Knotts man as well there. Former Knotts man, Ben Compton dismissed by former Knotts man, Jake Ball. That's his first wicket. But Somerset in the box seat there. They made 403. They've got Kent 14 for two now. Kent still 105 away from making Somerset bat again. So uh, difficult one there for Kent at the start of the season. I'll give you Division 2 in a moment. With four balls into this, Sam Cook over. Now the fifth ball is... Producing a run at last for Matthew Montgomery. Deflects it down to long leg. So he's up and running, as is this fourth wicket partnership. Nottinghamshire 19 for four as Joe Clark comes down to this end for the first time. Division two then, they're off. Finished, done at uh, Derby between Derbyshire and Gloucestershire. No play yet today at Headingley, where Leicestershire made 354. 90 for uh, Greg Mike in that one. Yorkshire 72 for two, but uh, didn't get much cricket yesterday. Hardly any. In fact, and uh, not started on day four, but uh, we are playing in the other two matches as uh, Clark now opens the face, guides it down to third man with soft hands. Won't go all the way. Dean Elgar in hot pursuit, and they're going to come back for three. Good running from Montgomery coming back to the danger end, and uh, they do come back for three. So Clark will keep strike. He's on three, 22 for three at the end of the eighth over. Just to tell you then, Glamorgan made uh, 620 for three declared at Lords. Middlesex 507 for six 
in reply. Good luck sorting something out from that in terms of uh, a positive finish. Uh, Sussex 432 for 8, still in their first innings. North Ants made 371, so Sussex lead by 61, just throwing the bat a little bit and just maybe they may be able to conjure something up there. We've got a bowling change very early on here, Paul Newton. Shane Snater coming into the attack from this, the Radcliffe Road end. Yeah, a little bit surprised that uh, Jamie Porter has only bowled four overs in uh, his opening spell. What will often happen is that Porter will eventually switch ends when uh, Sam Cook uh, maybe finishes a spell of what could be, let's say, six or seven overs from the Stuart Broad end. Uh, we've heard from Vaughan Prentice. He says, good morning from a grey at Burnham on Crouch on the Essex coast. He says, I seem to remember the late Robin Hobbs scoring a century against the Aussies at Chelmsford. Do any of the commentary team remember this? Yes, indeed I do. And uh, this uh, first ball from Snater is played into the covers. There's no run. The score uh, remaining at 22 for three. And uh, Robin Hobbs very sadly died on March the 17th this year, just uh, three weeks or so ago. I knew him very well indeed um, as a result of eventually commentating on Essex cricket. I didn't actually know him at the time he played that famous innings to which you refer, Vaughan. But a wonderful man, quite apart from being a terrific cricketer. And for a long time, he was the, the last player, leg spinner, to play for England. It would be quite a while before anyone else did who uh, bowled leg spin. Lovely shot here from... Uh, uh, Joe Clark just playing the ball, laying the bat on the ball and stroking it through the covers. No great back lift or anything like that. Beautiful timing. And scored a 26 for three. And Clark beginning to get going has a three and a four from uh, his last three deliveries. Yeah, I told the story earlier in the match. Um, I've lost a lot of sleep over Robin Hobbs over the course of uh, my year. I had the privilege of playing against him when I was down in uh, in North Devon back in the 80s against the Old England Test 11, yeah. and it ended up uh, a very close game with the idiot brace girdle on strike, the last ball of the match with... Uh, the, uh, the great England leg spinner you've just mentioned, Robin Hobbs bowling to me. Our side needed six to win with me on the strike. And he, he sort of just, I don't know, he, he scuttled along. I tried, obviously, to get down the track <laughs> and whack him away. And uh, I just drilled it down to long on for a single. So I've lost a lot of sleep over what I might have done differently over the years. Snater comes in again. Bowls to Clark. Plays this nicely down to mid on, and he's a very fine player, Joe Clark. And um, while others have been hurried through their shots, and, and, and at least a couple of cases, been amazed to hear the death rattle as they've been bowled. Clark there just has that extra bit of time in hand. Yeah, he's played beautifully in the first innings for his century, the 21st of his career. Has a very good record against Essex, uh, going back to his Worcestershire days, mm. and. Snater's in and bowls to him. Uh, Clark leans on this, plays it into the offside. We have the obligatory shouts of, oh, as though he was very nearly out. But I can assure you, he was totally in control there. 26 for three, target 335. But for the moment, Nottinghamshire have to damn the uh, rush of uh, wickets in the early stage of this innings uh, they've got to try and see that a couple of batsmen survive for a good hour at least Snater turns at the top of his runner in and bowls and another lovely shot here that's going out towards the backward point boundary and over it beautiful cricket from Clark two boundaries in that over 30 for 3 Clark moves up to 11 and uh, we're not finished with the over yet um just looking to see who we've heard from next because I'm still emails absolutely pouring in the next one from Christopher Forsk who says I got home yesterday from helping friends transplant some banana trees here on Saba in the Dutch Caribbean to find Essex in a much better position than I had anticipated good to see the depth of batting that the lineup had suggested coming through as uh, so he has more to say but here's Snater in a bolster, Clark plays it down to Porter at mid arm, and there is no run there. End of the seventh over, expensive one that one from Snater, thanks to superb stroke play from Clark. Took him for two boundaries. Clark has 11, Montgomery one, nine overs gone, target 335, uh, minimum of 88 overs to be bowled, 30 for three on the board, and just finishing Christopher's email. He continues, I will likely have to postpone a planned mid-morning hike today to make sure I don't miss the conclusion, but I will make it work. Thanks, as always, for the great commentary, and lovely to hear from you, Christopher. Thank you very much. 
It's one of the great calypsos, wasn't it? Hey, yep. Mr. Tallyman, Tally Me Banana. <laughs> loved, loved that. Loved the old calypso songs. There's plen been plenty done about cricket, of course, hasn't there? 30 for three over the years. And this time uh, Montgomery pushes this up to mid on. There was, uh, there was certainly one or two about the great cigar field sobers uh, that I've been privileged to hear. And of course, uh, uh, those little friends of mine, uh, Ramadin and Valentine, the great calypso. Yes, indeed. I'd just like to repeat his opening statement. I got home yesterday from helping friends mm. transplant some banana yeah. trees here uh, on Sabah in the Dutch Caribbean. We don't get that email every day. 30 for three. Next delivery on its way now. And uh, Matthew Montgomery steers it to backward point. No run. We were talking earlier in the match about... And Montgomery last year managed to, <laughs> to, to find himself as an international player. Um, got a, uh, an opportunity to play for Germany against... Uh, Italy, an Italian side that contained Gareth Berg and uh, Wayne Madsen. Uh, 30 for 3. Italy will take anybody, um, and, uh, and I know that from personal experience. <laughs> 30 for 3, having uh, represented the Azzurri back in the day, just on, uh, having lived there for five, six years. This one's clipped up to mid on, and there's no run. 30 for 3. Joe Clark, yeah, you mentioned his record. Um, before this game, it played against Essex on nine previous occasions in first-class cricket. Averaged 30, well, nearly 36 one century for Worcestershire against Essex of 105 and 350s. Um, and, of course, now in the first innings, he got a century um, for knots against Essex as well. So, uh, yeah, it is a side that he's uh, had rich pickings against in the past as this goes through to the keeper. 30 for three, it remains. And there's three wickets coming all in a cluster we've seen that numerous times in this game we've uh, we've had three very very lengthy partnerships but we've also either side of those partnerships seen wickets go down in quick succession and uh, Knott's lost Duckett for five Hamid for ten and Slater for three in the mere blink of an eye and that's a sign of a, a, a good cricket pitch where you get those events happening next delivery on its way now and Montgomery defends and it was talk about starting don't they you're obviously at your most vulnerable as you start your innings bowlers on a high because he's just taken a wicket and there's always lots of chat and encouragement for the bowlers when you first get out there that's when you're at your most vulnerable you've got to play yourself in as Matthew Montgomery and Joe Clark are trying to do right now but you want that perfect balance of some good batsmanship but also some great bowling there's Cook into his fifth over. This is the final ball of his fifth over. And Montgomery again happy to defend. So very impressive figures still from Sam Cook. Two for nine. Cook been playing his uh, 100 ball cricket on this ground for Trent Rockets. I'm sure he'll be uh, looking forward to coming back to Nottingham later in the season in presumably much warmer weather than we've had this week. It's been very, very chilly indeed. And say that um, even though we are in, inside technically we've got the windows wide open so we can get the fresh air and uh, just get the feel generally that we are a little bit part of it but I realise also we're not quite as exposed as the hardy spectators that have come along with their flasks and rugs and blankets and many many layers Paul. Snater up from the Radcliffe Road end bowls and uh, this ball he's hammered away to backward point this time it won't go for four as Paul Walter is patrolling that area but a single to Joe Clark takes him to 12 31 for three we've heard from Angela Murray good morning she says thanks for a great coverage Dave and grandson Theo are in the crowd supporting Essex Max is at home watching for them to be picked up by the cameras please say hello to <laughs> Tina Rose in Lincolnshire supporting Nottinghamshire very nice email. Thank you, Angela. Good to hear that you've got your family well and truly deployed as Snater rushes in again. Two slips and a gully now rather than three slips. The next ball is played into the offside. You go for a quick single. That's uh, well run. And was it, was it, it, sorry, Paul, was it Angela? Yes. Ask, ask them what stand they're in, Angela, and we'll try and get a, uh, a bit of a close up of that particular stand. You might be able to pick them yeah. out. Yes, do. Uh, Reply to us, Angela, on that uh, score. Emails to BBC Essex Cricket at gmail.com as Snater comes in again. 
bowls to Joe Clark. He's a lovely forward defensive shot. 32 for three up on the board. Clark has 12, Montgomery has two. We're in the 11th over. Of course, days one, two and three are featured between lunch and tea, a century stand in Nottinghamshire. We'll certainly be hoping that that trend continues into day four as well. Certainly, as the uh, effectiveness of the Kookaburra ball wanes, as it seems everybody agrees it does, uh, that is more than possible as, as Snate is in. Bowls to Clark. Head right over the ball, place it down to mid-off. 32 for three, he remains on 12, Montgomery two. Charlie Cole emails to say how I've missed the greatest sporting competition in the world, the county championship. Mm. With other games abandoned or cancelled, if we get the win today, he's obviously an Essex supporter, this could be a huge win for Essex come September. I've got a good feeling about this year. Thank you for that, Charlie. And I was delighted to hear no less a man than Michael Vaughan, former England captain, saying that the uh, his great achievement is the next four. There's a peel for LBW here, but it's uh, not out, and I think there was bat in that. Uh, Clark, the man on strike to Snater. To hear Michael Vaughan say that he rated the county championship the hardest tournament to win that uh, he had played in. And, of course, uh, he did win it with Yorkshire in uh, 2001. And it was after a long gap that Yorkshire won it that year. Um, but it's good when um, distinguished former players uh, give due credit to the, what is a wonderful competition. Was David Bias the skipper then? When they I heard? think you're right. Absolutely yeah. right, yeah. Here is Snater in and bowls. That goes through outside off stump. And there is no run and so after 11 overs of a minimum 88 to be bowled nottinghamshire needing 335 to win at 3.8 per over are 32 for three yeah i don't think that's a name i've sort of thought of or said from that day till this but uh, something there just just twigged i don't think michael vaughan would have been captain um then in 2001 I think just a funny feeling it was bias anyway 32 for three lunch is at one o'clock today uh, tea at 20 to 4 if we get that far of course and then we'll go on assuming the uh, the weather holds we'll go on and uh, play until the 96 overs have been bowled but uh, right now Essex might hope they'll be on the motorway long before then as Montgomery plays this up to mid on and there's no addition to the total yes I was up at uh, Scarborough on the occasion when Essex uh, when Yorkshire rather uh, celebrated their long-awaited championship win in 2001 and uh, Anthony McGrath was playing in that game the current Essex coach and made some big runs in the match but I remember Paul Grayson won the match for Essex even though he was a Yorkshireman he got his one five wicket haul Cook in once more again rocking forward defensively trying to just buy a little bit of time at the crease here Matthew Montgomery is on two 32 for three, we're in the 12th over. Neither side at the moment got anything to worry about with uh, regards to over rates. Nottinghamshire, of course, have finished their bowling duties. They're plus one, so they're OK. And Essex, pleasingly, I guess, because they haven't had to turn to spin yet in this innings, they're already plus one for their bowling efforts, so nothing to worry about. Cook bowls, Ken Montgomery lunging forward. Cook at least ask the question of the umpire as to whether they might just have been a connection with the pad before the bat, but uh, Steve O'Shaughnessy not inclined to offer Essex uh, a little bit of a reward there. And I think we're quite likely to see, in the fullness of time, uh, quite a few overs of spin in mm. this uh, second Nottinghamshire innings. Um, I thought Calvin Harrison was uh, the outstanding bowler yesterday afternoon for Nottinghamshire. Uh, and I think he will get more overs as time goes by. It looks a great prospect to me, and I think Essex will uh, use quite a lot of overs of Harmer and Critchley. Next ball past the shoulder of Montgomery's bat. Pepper has to dive down almost at the feet of Elgar to take it cleanly, but he did. And uh, this over so far, just a case of Cook racking up the dots as he likes to do. Already three maidens in his first five overs. He's uh, well on the way to adding another one here. Yeah, it's uh, such an important part of his armoury. 
Not only does he take a lot of wickets, he gives so little away. Next ball sees Montgomery this time advance down the track, but again, block it defensively. Of course, you weren't here uh, earlier in the match, uh, Paul, when Harmer and Critchley were bowling, and we fought, saw Feroz Kushi, who's not going to be able to forget this week in Nottingham. We saw him in at short leg with the biggest pads. They, they weren't the normal uh, shin pads that a short leg would uh, would have. Um, it's been interesting to see if he's got them on again. They, you know, the, they, they appeared under his flannels to be batting pads, almost right up to his waist, as uh, Montgomery doesn't uh, play a shot at that one. Lots of encouragement from behind the wicket. Cook um, theatrically puts hands on head. Can't believe the decision has been turned down, but uh, it has been turned down. It's the end of the over. It's a maiden to Cook. 32 for three. Montgomery thrust forward and... Uh, wasn't playing a shot, and Essex were very, very uh, confident they were going to get uh, the LBW shout there. We'll just see it. The camera not quite in line, and uh, you can understand why they've gone up and asked the question there. There's a lot of pleading going on from the uh, the Essex side as the ball thuds into the pad, but not out. It's the verdict, 32 for 3. Well, umpire Steve O'Shaughnessy was in no doubt that he was giving that not out. He immediately shook his head. Um, Obviously, it was well worth a shout because he didn't play a shot. I can only think it was height. Um, it looked to me as if in the umpire's mind was the thought that uh, it may well have gone over the top. As Snater begins the 13th over of the innings from the Stuart Broad end bowls. So two slips in the gully now. And uh, that's a leave and taken by Michael Pepper. Have a whole rack of uh, <laughs> emails to get to again. Um, Hello from sunny Thailand is uh, our next one for me in Hampshire. says, uh, have a, listened each day. Great commentary as always. What a great advert for cricket with an exciting Essex win finish in prospect, you say. Uh, a company car drive, um, oh, in, in fact, uh, sorry, says hello from sunny Thailand. And I think that's it. I think the rest of it um, uh, doesn't refer to us. As uh, <laughs> this next ball is played down to mid on, and the score is uh, 32 for 3. Thank you, Ian. Lovely to hear from you. Never been to Thailand, been to Malaysia and Singapore, one or two other places over in the Far East, but not uh, never been to Thailand. They say it's a lovely country. Yes, yeah. Edward Eamond emails, he says, uh, there seems to be a couple of players in each generation that are sensational in the championship, yet never play for England. He has more to say, but here's Snater in bowls, and Clark just drops the ball down at his feet. There's no run. He continues, yet never play for England, the likes of Hil Hildreth North East, for example. What more can Cook do to earn test honours? With 271 wickets at 19.75, more wickets is hardly going to knock the door down. Yes, a fair point, um, but I, I think you've got to say that with two of England's three bowlers, um, Anderson and Broad, accounting for 1,300 test wickets, it was always going to be very difficult to, uh, to break into that. But now that uh, Broad has gone and Anderson's uh, retirement, you'd have to think, is imminent as we see the ball played out to the square leg boundary, but not over it for two runs here to Clark, who moves along to 14, scored to 34 for three. Obviously, uh, Cook has sort of uh, faced a very difficult task to break his way into the England reckoning. And it has to be said as well, he hasn't just managed to come off big time on his appearances for the Lions. But they are, the selectors are fully aware of what a very fine bowler he is. And Snater on his way again penultimate ball of the over. Clark steers it straight to Porter at mid-on. There's no run. Well, uh, I, I don't know if he's still here and didn't see him yesterday, but certainly all of day one, all of day two. Uh, Jeff Arnold was here, who's uh, sort of the, the ECB uh, quick bowling scout. And, um, yeah, he was here yesterday as well. Right, yeah. so he's, he's certainly been here the first uh, three days because lots of uh, potential players on the, on the radar for him to have a look at and I'm sure Sam Cook is in that little group. Can't fail to have been impressed. Snater bowls. This one's cut away into the offside. There's uh, a single for Joe Clock at the at the end of the over here. So uh, he, he would certainly have been here and seen the hat trick. Yes, indeed. 
Um, I shared the lift with uh, Jeff Arnold, mm. that's why I know he was here yesterday. Came in while uh, I was on my mm. way down to the press room below us, a uh, couple of floors below us. Uh, 35 for 3 is the score on the board. We've now had 13 overs completed with uh, Clark on 15, Montgomery on 2, and uh, Clark on whom so much depends now, if Nottinghamshire are uh, to escape from the game at least with a draw. Um, it's uh, played thoroughly well to date. Still going to be Cook. Six overs, four maidens, two for nine. This time he'll be bowling at Joe Clark. Old. His last couple of overs at uh, Matthew Montgomery exclusively. Clark on 15. A lot depends on his shoulders. Stands there, a little crouch, a little bend of the knee and then... Brings the bat down beautifully to ease it into the offside, and there's no run. Just uh, slightly less than half an hour to go until the luncheon interval. So we've uh, we've got through 90 minutes or so uninterrupted. Don't imagine, I don't uh, envisage the weather conditions to to change much from this. Not too pleasant to be sat out there. You really do need to be to be wrapped up. Hot drinks to the fore. Next delivery, again, well defended by number 33, Joe Clark, who later on in the season, in fact, not too much later on in the season, because I think it starts right at the end of the May, uh, end of May, doesn't it, when the blast starts. Joe Clark will be the uh, the new blast skipper. Stephen Mullaney, of course, had it last year, and, uh, and for the what, five, six, seven years, was it, before then, uh, Dan Christian, the Australian, now retired, led knots to two. T20 titles, but uh, Joe Clark will be the skipper this year for the first time. Let's this go through to the keeper. Dangerous hitter, of course, at the top of the order with Alex Hales. Yeah, I've just seen Jamie Porter unwinding, and I think he will replace Sam Cook um, at the Stuart Broad end. Uh, this is Cook's seventh over of the innings, and I think he will uh, have earned a well earned rest. Uh, in the view of skipper Tom Wesley, he's picked up two of the three wickets to fall, and Porter, who's picked up the other one, will take his place at the Stuart Broad end, I would anticipate, in uh, a couple of overs' time. Clark on 15. Defends once again. Yes, as far as Wesley's concerned, he'd, he'd, he'd want to keep one or the other going for as long as he could, of course, Cook and, uh, and Porter. Um, elsewhere... Kent now 36 for two, striving to uh, keep Somerset at bay. They're still 36 behind, I uh, uh, beg your pardon, uh, 36 for two, they're 83 behind uh, Somerset. Still not got on at Old Trafford or Edgbaston today. So this one is defended, there's no run. So... Uh, no other cricket in Division 1. In Division 2, Middlesex still batting 525 for 7 there. They no longer have uh, first innings points, but they, they might be looking to chase down Glamorgan 620 for 3. The man who's uh, done the bulk of the run scoring for Middlesex uh, latterly is Ryan Higgins. He's 161 not out. Tremendous stuff from Higgins as Clark again pushes back in the general direction of Cook, who lets it go through to mid-off. So uh, another tight, tidy over from Cook. Another maiden, seven overs, five maidens, two for nine. And the one other game is in Division 2, where North Ants made 371. Sussex now 465 for nine. They're still batting. Ke um, is it, it's not Kieran Carlson, is it? Uh, it's Jack Carlson. Um, Carson has just gone for 61 down at the bottom of the order there yesterday, a century for Tom Haynes for Sussex. They lead Northampton by 94 at 465 for nine. Uh, email from David Fuller. I heard you talking about Sam Cook's first season and the performance I remember most was down at the Rose Bowl, uh, nowadays known as the Aegeus, where he got a five-wicket haul against Hampshire. If I remember correctly, Essex won the match after being asked to follow on. Your memory does serve you correctly. And after that, the title came easily. On the way back from that match, I stopped at the services on the M3, where I saw several Essex players, including skipper Ryan Tenderscarter, buying snacks in the small, small supermarket stall. Here is Porter in. 
bowls and uh, Montgomery plays it uh, defensively into the offside for no run. He finishes, please say hello to any Hampshire supporters who remember the day who may be listening because their match has been abandoned. Thank you, David. And yeah, it was actually, I think, a mistake of Hampshire to enforce the follow-on because uh, Essex got quite a lot of runs in what was the third innings, therefore, of the match. Uh, Hampshire, with a big first innings lead, would have been a position if they'd then batted in the third innings to have set Essex something like 450 to 500 to win. Porter's in. Bowls a lovely straight drive and very well fielded to his own bowling uh, by Jamie Porter, uh, who's come on in place of Shane Snater. I thought that uh, Porter would be replacing Sam Cook at the Stuart Broad end, but no, Snater didn't really bowl at his best, I felt, this morning, Dave. No, I'm just you know, looking round. I don't think there's any protective pads or anything been uh, brought out on the boundary edge. It may be that uh, we're going to have to wait a little while for spin. Porter. Bowls and that's left one or two cries of anguish from the Essex close fielders, uh, suggesting they thought that uh, um, the batsman wasn't sure of himself there, but I wouldn't agree with that. I think uh, it's just a tactic um, that so many of the sides use. 35 for three up on the board. Uh, yeah, and just on referring to uh, Hampshire and their home ground, I understand they've just changed uh, name, naming rights again, and uh, we've just got used to calling it the Aegeus Bowl from the Rose Bowl. It's got a new title this year, which we'll uh, we'll have to get used to. Yes, I didn't know that. Porter's in bowls, and it's played down to mid on for no run. Shane Snater field. Just don't ask me what it is just ah, yet. right. <laughs> but uh, I, I know it's. Uh, I know th there's been a change of naming rights during the uh, the close season which we'll all become aware of no doubt yeah 35 for three means exactly 300 further runs are needed for mm. knots to pull off what would be a sensational victory David Phipps has emailed and we'll come to that after this next ball from Porter two slips of gully the close field Porter bowls another leave outside off stump from the uh, Montgomery and uh, David Phipps says, with reference to the ongoing discussions about the above, which is a four-day game versus Bash Bash, cricket is his title, I'm reminded of the Michael Holding statement, who, when questioned about his non-appearance on the IPL and similar band of uh, commentators, is reputed to have said, I only commentate on cricket. End of discussion, methinks. <laughs> <laughs> the nice one, David, um, emailing us from uh, Seaham in County Durham where sadly uh, not a ball has been bowled no. in the opening championship game. Same is true up the road from here at Derby. As, uh, here's another one outside off stump, taken on the stoop by replacement wicketkeeper Michael Pepper. Rossington has a finger injury. And Nottinghamshire 35 for three. And uh, we have now had 15 of the 88 minimum overs. And of course, for those four sides that haven't had any cricket uh, in this first round of matches in Division 2, Derbyshire Gloucestershire in Division 1, Durham and Hampshire. Of course they've already got eight points. Um, that's something else that's changed during the uh, the close season. It's been five points for the draw the last couple of years. It's gone back to eight as it used to be. So uh, Dur Durham and Hampshire without bowling a ball have got eight points. If Nottinghamshire, and I just say that because they're 35 for three, but if Nottinghamshire were to lose this they're, they're, they're going to have played good hard competitive cricket for four days and end up just with four points. Yep, no, that's right. Um, personally, I would have left it at five points for the draw. But uh, we've now got Shane Snater switched, um, rather than Porter, switched to the Stuart Broad end. And he comes in. Bowls, played into the covers. There's no run there. 35 for three is the score. Brief email from Fred Branham, listening in Cornwall. Says, hello guys, nice to hear the commentary. Is Ben Compton related to Dennis Compton? I'm listening to it raining in Cornwall. Yes, he's his grandson. His grandson. Cousin of, is, is the cousin of uh, Nick Compton, who we know of with Somerset and, uh, and yeah. Middlesex. And of course, he had a, a little bit of a run with England as well, didn't he, Nick? But uh, Ben uh, got his chance here and then moved to Kent a couple of years ago. Snater in. Bowls, and that's a lovely shot for four from Joe Clark. Just lent on a straight ball 
and played it between bowler and mid on lovely on drive there they say the hardest shot to play in cricket well Clark makes it look one of the easiest he's made 19 very good very well made runs not just the scoring shots but some great defensive shots as well 33 deliveries he's faced Montgomery has been on two for quite a while now and it's 39 for three and the other one I'm regularly asked and have been over the years is uh, is Brett Hutton here any uh, <laughs> any relation to uh, Sir Leonard Hutton and that's that's a no that one's a negative next delivery Snater balls to Clark Clark firmly back down to mid off and there will be no run there score remaining at uh, 39 for three Essex skipper Tom Wesley in the uh, mid off position so we're talking about father and sons uh, a little earlier in the match with uh, Topper's senior referring to uh, obviously himself and Topper's junior both having played for Essex and Snater on his way back in halfway through this uh, over having switched to the Stuart Broad end for played defensively back email from Andrew Vigand, who says, uh, Hi all, lovely to hear the dulcet tones of Paul Newton again, my embarrassment acute. As a resident of Chester the Street, I'm rather puzzled that no play at all was possible over the last four days, as we've had four fairly dry days, with only the occasional shower, usually early morning or overnight. Any idea why no play was possible? Can one assume that the ground staff haven't been able to get the outfield properly drained? Desperately hoping the same doesn't happen for Essex's visit in a couple of weeks. Snater bowls and Clark plays the ball again to Wesley at mid-off and he just finishes off. Any idea which of the esteemed personages will be commentating on that game? Uh, as far as I know, I think Chester Street is going to be two days of uh, Glenn Speller and two days of Nick Gledhill. And I'm sure they'd be delighted to hear from you when they're up there, Andrew. Thank you very much for your email and your kind words. Yes, I've uh, seen one or two comments about the sogginess of the outfield, and it's obviously not what's happened this week. It's well, what's happened over the last two or three months. Yes, absolutely. As Clark, lovely shot, but he's not going to get a run here as it's uh, sufficiently within the range of mid on uh, to, for the single not to be a save there. But uh, another very fine shot. 39 for three up on the board. And uh, Cookley Fieldsman there at uh, wide mid on. Clark has 19, Montgomery 2, and uh, 39 for 3. We've now had 16 of the minimum 88 overs target, 335. It is really staggering that uh, cricket has been played in this country for as long as it is, and we've, we've still never had a, a proper indoor cricket stadium. There's been one or two that have sort of hosted. Uh, exhibition games over the yeah. years, uh, not very often, but uh, occasionally they've had one, at one or two of the uh, the bigger football grounds or what have you, as uh, Porter bowls and it's deflected away on the uh, on the leg side. I, I'm referring to the Millennium Stadium. I think they've had one or two in there where they've been able to shut the roof. But um, yeah, a, a country that uh, relies so much on good weather to to be able to play one of its national games or its uh, its summer national sport doesn't have an indoor stadium it would take a a lot of the um a lot of the intrigue about what sort of weather you're going to get over the course of four days away from it but one thing you can say if you've got a roof it, it's at least going to be dry and it took wimbledon a long time didn't it to uh, to realize as this is uh, yeah. pushed away behind square and center court meant that crowds could come along spend their whatever it was, absolute fortune for tickets there, but be guaranteed play, and then number one court got its roof. Don't think it'll ever happen uh, in, in my lifetime, Paul, that we'll see a, a purpose-built indoor cricket stadium in the UK, but uh, one there for future generations to think about, no doubt. Lovely thought. Porter in from the Radcliffe Road end bowls and Matthew Montgomery just chops it down into the gully there's no run it's just I guess easier for for match uh, purposes just to throw everybody in an aeroplane and fly them to Abu Dhabi that seems to be the way doesn't it does indeed um, nice brief email from Nicky Smith who says really appreciating the great county's commentary um, so sorry the weather not, hel not helping some of the teams 
This is the last bastion, he says, of excellent ball-by-ball radio commentary. Thank you so very much. Well, thank you very much for listening. I've been called a lot of things. Last bastion. Yeah, <laughs> I thought he was we'll going to say that. something else. <laughs> now there is an LBW shout here asking umpire Longley, the former Derbyshire seamer, who might have a, uh, a leaning to, <laughs> towards the, uh, the seamers uh, on the county circuit, maybe a, a, a member of their uh, of their union, but... Shakes his head, not out. Just shaped back into the batter. Nice delivery from Porter. Montgomery, yeah. actually. Yeah, I've just sort of uh, lost track of how many deliveries he's faced for a second. And then two from 31, Montgomery. So the very definition of setting his stall out watchfully and defensively. Porter in again to Matthew Montgomery. And again, rocks forward and defends. Two from 32 now for Matthew Montgomery. And Angela has replied to your request to, for you to tell her um, uh, or <laughs> what stand? Where, yeah, where exactly her family are sitting uh, in the crowd. Um, she says, thank you for reading out my email. David and grandson Theo are sat at the Radcliffe Road end, front row seats. Hope that helps. Well, we'll see what we can do there, uh, Angela. Thank you very much for coming back to us. Yeah, we don't know if it's lower or upper, but uh, there's one for uh, Kirsty and Aaron in the production office and the camera crew, as uh, this one is... Beating Montgomery outside the off stump through uh, to the keeper. Um, so we're looking out for uh, a couple. One a, one a youngster. Um, who is it? Who is it we're looking out for? Sorry, Paul. It's grandson Theo um, was one of them. And uh, Max, sorry, Max, he's at home. Um, but Dave and grandson Theo are the two who are in the uh, front row seats at the Radcliffe Road end. I don't know if we're able to uh, get a picture during the, uh, the course of the cricket that's left before lunch here and one o'clock is the uh, the luncheon interval which is just less than a quarter of an hour or so about 12 13 minutes to go until lunch 39 for three hope they're enjoying their days um here at trembridge and um, we've heard from nick hines in crete he says, I agree, Little Chef, by which he refers to Sam Cook, um, has been unlucky not to get an England call, but if he played for England, he would miss Essex games, so his bad luck would be of benefit to Essex. True enough, Snate is in and bowls, and this ball's played to Milan by Joe Clark, scores uh, 39 for three as we start the 18th of the minimum 88 overs to be bowled, weather permitting. Yeah, it was Johnny Cash who sang about a boy named Sue, wasn't it? It's it, correct. It, it could be the Sue chef and <laughs> end up with the unwanted uh, <laughs> name for a male of, of Sue, maybe. The Sue chef. Well, of course, Essex uh, with uh, two cooks in their side. And so Sir Alistair was always, always referred to from a long way back yeah. in his career as chef. And hence uh, Sam Cook amusingly became little chef as Clark plays the next ball into the offside. Jordan Cox nips across to field in front of Tom Wesley at mid-off. Yeah, we, ha we have noticed in this game that he's lost the S now, obviously being the only cook on the uh, on the staff, so he's, he's no longer got S cook on the back of his shirt. And he may now have become big chef, as, uh, or simply just chef, I suppose, as Essex wait to produce another cook. Um, to introduce into their side and not sure if they've got one yet but Snater's in and uh, bowls to Clark and Clark who's every shot really has been of, of the highest order be it just a defensive push or a handsome boundary and this time it's a very nice shot but straight at Tom Wesley at mid off so no runner cruise uh, Ron Dunn emails many thanks for your top commentary over the top of watching you via YouTube um, I'm an Essex supporter, but I've lived in Scotland for 29 years now, so your service is a lifeline for me and many others around the world. You continue, but I have to break in as Snater's on his way to bowl to Clark. Oh, he's played on! He has played on and looks disconsolately over his back. It was not necessarily a wicket-taking delivery until it took one because it was outside off stump, short enough to back cut, but it came off a thick inside edge straight into the stumps. And Clark, well, I was just saying how well he played and he departs for 19 and that is a great breakthrough as we move towards lunch for Essex there because Clark is a man who provenly is well capable having seen out many of the remaining 70-odd uh, overs that are left available. 
Well, that really is a damaging moment for Nottinghamshire. A great one for Essex, of course. The uh, the flip side to Nottinghamshire's misfortunes is that Essex are now just six wickets away from starting their season with a victory. It was uh, a rare ball that has been sent down over the last few overs that just maybe, just maybe offered a scoring opportunity. Clark's eyes lit up, went to try and cut it away. Might just have either nibbled back or might have been a little closer to him than he in. Uh, initially thought it was and he's inside edged it onto the stumps and he's gone Joe Clark out for 19 and Nottinghamshire at 39 for four they might just need a little bit of intervention from the weather later on unless they can find runs in the second innings like they did in the first innings from one of their other deputants that's Jack Haynes one former Worcestershire top order batter replaces another one Haynes on his way out Montgomery has been obdurate, two from 33. Haynes comes out 10 minutes before lunch with knots 39 for four. And just uh, finishing off Ron's email, remember he's up in Scotland. He says, while listening or watching the match, I'm making travel plans to travel down from West Lothian to Durham CCC on Friday the 26th of April. You made me stop in my tracks whilst meticulously working out my split ticket ticketing when mentioning Durham's match at Chester the street has been abandoned without a ball being bowled sadly do I don't I is the question as it's the only time this season that I'll get a chance to see the 2024 county champions play uh, all the best and again thank you for the informative and fabulous service kind regards Ron thank you very much to Ron down there as here comes Snater in bowls and uh, Haynes leans forward, plays it well, down to Tom Wesley, Tom Wesley at uh, mid-off, and knots 39 for four, and uh, I'm continuing to hammer my way through these the fabulous tranche of emails because I will have to depart shortly mm. to do my update for BBC Essex uh, 1 o'clock news. Ian Hampshire again says, I think my earlier email suffered a problem in transit. Um, a car company, a company car driver is responsible for any wrongful incident, um, not necessarily his employer. Snater bowls and Haynes plays to short extra. Jordan Cox, no run, end of the over, 39 for four. And uh, that is now 18 overs of the 88, 70 more overs minimum remain. Um, and you continue with your email, not necessarily his employer. Shouldn't a batter be similarly responsible and not his employer? Uh, in this match incident, a point for discussion. My thanks and good wishes. Um, he's referring to the bat incident, the in, in, incidentally, um, and saying that um, Feroz Kushi should be responsible. He says, my thanks and good wishes to all at Essex and Knox, also to my good Essex friend David Brangwin and all old Parkonians. Thank you, Ian. Porter Bowles, the start of a new over. Montgomery defends. Uh, yeah, I'm getting lots of uh, uh, messages on the old X twittery thing as well many thanks we'll try and get as many in as we can 39 for four uh, thanks to Andrew Parker and Simon Aldridge who say uh, the bowl Rose Bowl stroke of GS Bowl is now called the Utilita Bowl um, <laughs> change of naming rights um, down at uh, down at Southampton uh, do the win uh, through the winter thanks to Andrew and to Simon as Porter Bowls this is cut away for four welcome runs for Montgomery who's been um, kept very, very quiet by the seamers, gets a boundary, moves on to 6, 43 for 4, and Simon says, I'm still smiling after Saturday's Old Farm Derby. Um, Norwich beating Ipswich over there in uh, East Anglia. Julie Wood says, Hobby and I are supporting Knotts, Dave, from sunny Orlando. My daughter flew there this morning. Uh, Julie, or, well, I hope she did, sent me a message from uh, the airport last night and the family are, uh, are off for a few days in sunny Orlando, no doubt uh, off to see Mickey Mouse and all that sort of stuff, so I uh, hope the weather's lovely over there for them. Uh, lovely to hear from you, Julie, in uh, beautiful Florida. Next ball is pushed back to the bowler. Um, Never thought I'd uh, say these words, but I think I probably prefer the Aegeus <laughs> to uh, Utilita. Um, <coughs> yes, we'll get used to that one. The uh, Royal Dakota Grey says, uh, thanks for the heads up. Yeah, it's the Utilita Bowl now, Dave. Uh, thank you very much. And also says the uh, Old Farm Derby was intense. Um, 
the Thornywood lad said I'm a Nottinghamshire supporter watching the live stream down in uh, Kobe in Japan. I don't know why I said Co uh, down in Kobe. Uh, in Kobe. I thought it was going to say Ken because I could see the K looming. It's defended Kobe in Japan. Uh, I'm here as a language student. No cricket here. The stream and the commentary very much appreciated. Time difference mean it's an evening watch for me. The local J League team, Vissel Kobe, has a roofed stadium. It's very grand. Thanks very much to that, Thornywood lad. Um, yeah, the old J League. I did a bit of commentary, football commentary on that about uh, nine, ten years or so ago, and uh, very, very difficult um, as an idiot to do that. As this has worked away behind square, even as, the, as the graphics came up on the s screen, obviously um, in, in Japanese, didn't give me uh, any any help whatsoever. <laughs> Forty-four for four, but. Uh, Good luck to Vissel Kobe, and thanks to the Thornywood lad, language student out in uh, Kobe, Japan. That sounds terrific, doesn't it? Adrian Thomas, um, uh, the Renegades, uh, yes, in Australia, in Melbourne, uh, have an indoor stadium. Thanks for that, Adrian. Yeah, I've, I've not been in, but I've been been past it, I think, when it was still called the uh, the Docklands. I think that's got a different name there now. Thank you, Adrian. Must just interrupt to ask you if we have a... Uh luncheon voucher today uh, Dave yes there'll be one uh, there'll be, one, uh, there'll be yep. one behind you you'll be all right got you, to leave you in a moment yeah, you won't miss out as Porter bowls on the uh, pads of Haynes tucks it to uh, Cook a mid on no run end of the over we're very close to the end of the session one more over uh, Paul is uh, there we go there's a, now there's a shot come back I'll mention Paul in a second a shot of the uh, I think that's the upper um, Radcliffe Road we don't really know what we're looking for but this is brilliant and hopefully Angela can see her family members on the front row but we don't know if it's the upper or the lower front row but there we are lovely stuff those of you watching the pictures can enjoy those for a moment um, one over I suspect to go into lunch this will be the 20th of the innings an innings that has belonged exclusively to the Essex Seamers, two wickets for Sam Cook, one for Jamie Porter, one for Shane Snater who comes in now to bowl to Matthew Montgomery who's on seven and is uh, denied an eighth run as he pushes it to backward point fielded by Koshi. Um, Coventry Pie Bob is, uh, is, is not very very much enjoying what's happening so far. Charlie says, I spoke to Sam Cook yesterday, Dave, asked uh, about what we should call him. Uh, Sam said, I'm just the chef now. Uh, maybe a Notts fan, but I'm very, very pleased for him. He's a nice guy. He knows how to bowl at Trent Bridge. We know him well here, uh, given the other competition. Yes, Charlie? Um, nice of you to, uh, to engage with Sam and pass that on. He's just the chef. Next ball on its way and uh, allowed by Montgomery to go through to the keeper at Brace Cricket if you want to get in touch although we're running out of time for this session uh, Di Davis and Paul in the infinite wisdom of BBC Sport regardless of the result today seems both Knotts and Essex have already been relegated uh, to Division 2 <laughs> yes there's a, um, a Division 1 county championship table and it's got um, Knots and Essex at the moment in Division 2. They'll attend to that, Di. They'll attend to that. Uh, the 52-year-old says uh, regarding Knots, the end is nigh already. Keep the faith as Montgomery works this away. He's going to get another boundary here, Matthew Montgomery. He's had to bide his time and wait for loose balls. And This Essex attack don't give you many, but that was on his pads and he's tucked it away for four runs. Uh, thanks to everybody that's taken the trouble to get in touch. Thanks to uh, Paul Newton for allowing us the use of his email and thanks uh, primarily to all of you out there that's taken the opportunity to, to get in touch and of course all the uh, the many thousands and thousands that just chosen to have a little um, a listen. I think this is the first time in the game that I'm going to say these words. The ball has been handed to the umpire um, Essex just asking uh, Steve O'Shaughnessy if there's anything wrong with it. It's been handed back to uh, Tom Wesley. And Tom Wesley says, are you sure? And they're going to get on with it. Um, the great Don Topley's been in touch to say he'll be the master chef for me. <laughs> it's a nice one, Don. Uh, hope you're well. Hope you uh, got back safe and sound. 48 for four. On setting up the uh, Essex victory on days one and two, and 
Paul Newton hope he can, he can see it over the line. Four wickets already, six more required. A Snater comes in and bowls, and Montgomery drives into the offside. Can't penetrate the field. And it remains 48 for four. Two balls left in the session. All the uh, clocks, watches, laptops, phones, digital devices. I can see all say it's just either on or just past one o'clock. Still two balls to go here. Well, it's been a brilliant session for Essex already. Could be even better if uh, Shane Snater can get a wicket. The hold-up is because Michael Pepper's frantically waving for a helmet. He's going to stand up to the stumps here just to give Matthew Montgomery something uh, else to think about for these last two deliveries. Maybe he was just nicely ensconced an inch or two outside the crease and now he'll have to go back behind the line with Pepper standing up but uh, he can't do that until a helmet's brought out and clearly there wasn't one readily to hand on the boundary. One or two have gone scurrying back into the Essex dressing room to find Michael Pepper's helmet. <coughs> Will be an update for BBC Radio Nottingham in uh, just a second. We'll come back to you just as soon as I've uh, done that. The helmet being brought out now for Michael Pepper. Forty-eight for four. Snater with one of the wickets to fall. He got rid of Joe Clark. Couple to Sam Cook. The wickets are for Mead and Slater, and Ben Duckett fell to Jamie Porter. So we're ready to go. Pepper standing up, Snater in, and uh, Montgomery off strike as he deflects this down the leg side. And he'll take a single and go to the sanctuary of the non-striker's end. Montgomery on 12, Nottinghamshire 49 for four. Jack Haynes, I think, will probably be thinking, well, I could have done without that. Because last ball before lunch, he's still on naught. I have to face this delivery. Scored 77 in the first innings. Jack Haynes and then slapped a, a full toss from Matt Critchley straight to mid on. Snater bowls to him and uh, he's off the mark. Again, just helping it behind square on the leg side. So that's an even 50 on the board for Nottinghamshire. And that will be the bales flipped off. It is lunch. 50 for four knots set to score 335 in 88 overs. I think we can uh, already suggest that isn't going to happen. Can Nottinghamshire either through their own means or the weather get a draw out of this? There is that radio update. Yeah, the players are just leaving the field now for lunch. Nottinghamshire have been set to score 335 in 88 overs. And I think clearly we can say that's not going to happen. They're 50 for four at lunch. Hamid, Duckett, Slater and Clark all dismissed by this excellent Essex attack earlier in the morning. Essex declared on 374 for nine, setting knots 335 at lunch. They're 50 for four. So there we are. Uh, many thanks to everybody for uh, listening to us this morning and uh, for getting in touch. Um, the afternoon promises to be, uh, I suggest, more of the same. Matthew Montgomery and Jack Haynes will resume. Montgomery's been very, very watchful indeed. Uh, Knotts will be hoping he can just stick it out throughout that afternoon session. Um, the weather is exactly as it was at the start of the day. It's cloudy. The wind has dropped somewhat the uh, chances of rain uh, appear to be only about 10 to 12 percent they're saying so Essex supporters will be hoping that a job can be done during that afternoon session meanwhile it's lunch here at Trent Bridge we'll invite you to go and uh, make the most of the next 40 minutes but when the players return so will Paul Newton and myself Dave Bracegill thanks for your company and we'll speak to you a little later on
Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to Trent Bridge with uh, the tea interval. I beg your pardon, the luncheon interval having uh, duly been completed. The umpires and the players are on their way back out to the middle with Nottinghamshire due to resume shortly on 50 for four. They've been set to score 335 to beat Essex. Um, a minimum of 88 overs, provided they get them all in. And uh, at lunch, well, it's fair to say that the Nottinghamshire ship has already run aground. They're 50 for four. They've lost uh, both of their international openers, Asiba Mead and Ben Duckett. Each went cheaply, a mead to Sam Cook for ten, Ben Duckett went to Porter for five, and Ben Slater, he fell for three, a second wicket for Cook, and Joe Clark, resolute, watchful innings from Joe Clark, who made a century in the first innings just before lunch. He played on to Shane Snater for 19. Matthew Montgomery is 12 not out. It's been a watching brief for him, 12 from 43 deliveries. He um, was two from 31, and was able to pick up a couple of boundaries just before the interval with him. Jack Haynes on his Nottinghamshire debut, a close season move from Worcestershire. He's one not out from four balls, made 77 in the first innings. I'm Dave Bracegirdler from BBC Radio Nottingham, alongside me from BBC Essex, uh, in a slightly cheerier mood <laughs> than, uh, than many of the Nottinghamshire supporters I, I saw downstairs and on the concourses, a lot fearing the worst. We won't be here at tea, Dave, and all that uh, business. Paul Newton, good afternoon. Yeah, very good afternoon, uh, Dave. And I think that wicket of Joe Clark just before lunch was absolutely critical. He had not put a foot wrong in the 33 deliveries he faced, well, the 32 he faced before the fatal one. And it wasn't that it was a ball that would normally trouble him at all. It was a little bit short outside off stump. Wouldn't have hit the stumps, but in attempting to uh, play it down into the third man area, he just got a thick inside edge into the stumps playing on. And uh, he is a man who could well have still been there at, shall we say, at least five o'clock tonight if not further. So here we go, there's still 68 overs potentially left as uh, the first ball from Jamie Porter from the Radcliffe Road end, right on the money, beats Haynes outside the off stump. Just uh, right on one o'clock, I just read out a message that you wouldn't have heard, Paul, because you were doing your updates uh, next door. Charlie, a Trent Bridge regular, um, he's had one or two conversations with Sam Cook in his uh, in his. Trent Rockets guys here and says he's, uh, he spoke to him yesterday and said what do you want to be called now then and he says uh, Sam said I'm just chef now so uh, he's the new chef yes excellent 50 for 4 Haynes on 1 Porter to bowl to the former Worcestershire man and uh, this is allowed to go through to that is still Michael Pepper isn't it with the gloves on Adam Rossington Very much with so, a finger yep. injury off the field so Michael Pepper who was in the Essex squad for this game along with Ben Allison and Aaron Beard they were omitted from the final starting 11 but uh, Pepper fortunately has uh, hung around in Nottingham and has got uh, an opportunity today with Adam Rossington having picked up a finger injury 50 for 4 Haynes blocks this one from Porter, yeah, it would have been <laughs> real, <laughs> a real, um, a really miserable one for uh, Michael Pepper. If uh, yesterday they'd let him go, he got all the way back to um, his home, wherever it is in the Chelmsford area, and then they said, "Oh, we need you to come back." There's an injury to Adam. Yes, <clears throat> I remember a remarkable game, 2019 April, first game of the season, Hampshire v Essex at the then Aegeus. Each side fielded three different wicket keepers in the course of the game. Porter, balls to Haynes, steers this to point, no run. And uh, in, in the case of Essex, one of them was Michael Pepper, no less, uh, replacing the injured Adam Wheater in the course of the game. And I think Will Buttleman was the uh, third. And Hampshire, who absolutely steamrolled at Essex in that game, 200 and odd runs, I think the margin of victory, despite a Bopara century. But that was Essex's only defeat in the campaign they went on to win the title 50 for four it is no addition to the lunchtime score here this is the fifth ball of the afternoon session Haynes again very watchful happy to defend so two slips a gully a point an extra cover and a mid off the six fielders on the offside and there's uh, a deep backward square stroke long leg you pay your money you take your choice what you want to call that position there's a mid wicket and there's a mid on Probably at uh, deep backward square, actually. 
Sam Cook, Porter. In he comes, leaving behind a, a flattened pile of sawdust. Bowls to Haynes, so that's a tidy maiden right on the money uh, for Haynes um, from his perspective. Most of the deliveries found the middle of his defensive bat, and it remains 50 for four. Nottinghamshire certainly no uh, no signs, no likelihood that they'll be trying to pursue a victory target of 335. Whether they're able to manage to uh, stick around long enough to get the draw points remains to be seen. We've had 21 of the scheduled 88 overs. Yep, um, emails to. Uh, BBC Essex Cricket at gmail.com. Uh, Edward Eland is the uh, uh, probably one or two of these emails we didn't quite get round to before lunch. We'll come round to them now as here we see the first over from the Stuart Broad end since lunch and it's Sam Cook back in the attack and eliciting a good defensive shot from Matt Montgomery who's played very solidly here for his 12 from 44 deliveries. Haynes has one from 10 and Edward says challenges the longer players like Cook don't get selected the greater the allure of contracts at counties at test playing grounds. Look at Lawrence for example allegedly turning down more money to stay at Chelmsford. Cook's on his way in and bowls to Montgomery plays it uh, defensively into the offside no run regarding nickname I have seen suggestions that Cook should graduate from Little Chef to Master Chef as we now know that he has indeed um, done that so fair is fair in the land of the Essex dressing room and on the same subject James Dale says afternoon all I'm glad the cricket has started and enjoying the coverage of this game against Knott when Sam Cook came along and took the nickname Little Chef I always thought that trick was missed in not referring to Sir Alistair as Master oh. Chef and that is the end of Montgomery and uh, a fifth wicket falls with the score on 50 and I'll get you to describe it, yeah. Dave. I was just reading an email yeah. at that moment. A shouldered arms. It was just a complete and utter error of misjudgment. Um, whether it jagged back, um, and that's what did Montgomery, but certainly the initial line that Matthew Montgomery picked up was one that he was able to leave on length and line. Shouldered arms. His bat was pointing up to the cloudy skies as the uh, ball nipped back and demolished the off stump and... That's another wicket, 50 for five. We're just going to get a replay. Those of you watching the monitors now, yeah, it was just an error of misjudgment uh, from Matthew Montgomery. A little wide on the crease there. Sam Cook just bringing it in naturally, nicely with the angle. And poor old Matthew Montgomery, uh, right at the start of the post-lunch session, has gone 50 for five knots. Montgomery ball cook for 12. Yeah, thanks, Dave. And, well, a, a rather sad sight from Matt Montgomery's point of view because he defended very diligently indeed. But you couldn't really say that the ball had done a great deal. It possibly just came in slightly with the bowler's natural uh, uh, approach. And he, at the very moment, he decided it was a ball to leave. It was knocking his off stump out of the ground. Um, Quite often I've seen Sam Cook pull that trick, but he has moved the ball prodigiously on occasion in, but that wasn't true on that occasion. It more or less held its course, and just a misjudgment, I'm afraid, from uh, Matt Montgomery, who departs for 12 and uh, 50 for 5 up on the board, sees uh, Knott's plight uh, deepening straight after lunch. And we've just been joined by listeners to Five Sports Extra, welcoming you to uh, the start of the afternoon session here at Trent Bridge. We're in the second over since lunch. No addition to the total, but an addition in the wickets column. Matthew Montgomery just shouldered arms, complete misjudgment, a delivery from Sam Cook, who got a hat-trick in the first innings. He's now got three for nine in the second innings, and that one was an easy wicket because he just put it on a good, good line there. Montgomery... As I say, a misjudgment on line and length, shouldered arms, it nipped back a touch and demolished his off stumps. And not so 50 for five. As Cook roars in again to Bolton, Lyndon James, and he plays his first ball confidently enough out to Paul Walter at square leg or just in front of the square leg umpire. And 50 for five remains the score. Just looking at the skyline, it's uh, a little bit ominous. Overall, <clears throat> the suggestion is that we may get a shower or two, but shouldn't be. Uh, um, a continuous thread of rain during the afternoon. I, I, the, the app <coughs> I've gone for Nottingham, Paul, is that I can't find any rain anywhere, and believe me, I've looked. Righto. <laughs> well, here's Cook in. Three slips. Balls. Ball played into 
the offside. There's no run. Just completing the uh, email I'd begun before that wicket was taken. Uh, now Sir Alistair has retired. I think Sam Cook could deservedly take up the name Master Chef on account of his consistently high performances. Thanks again for the coverage and keep up the good work. Jim Dale, thank you very much indeed, Jim. You're very welcome and uh, great to have the cricket back as people generally have been observing. The, the winter goes about ten times more slowly than the summer in this country as Cook's in bowls and James again finds Paul Walter just in front of square on the on side. And so we've had two maidens, one of them a wicket maiden, the one just completed there. Sam Cook has three wickets, Jamie Porter one and Shane Snater one, 50 for five and uh, 22 overs have been bowled. Just to say, they've uh, now started for the first time today. They've started after lunch at uh, Edgbaston, where Warwickshire play in Worcestershire. The Bears against the Pears, that local rivalry in the West Midlands. Uh, Worcestershire 250 for three, leading Warwickshire by 277. So uh, whether they're able to conjure up some sort of natural finish there or force one uh, remains to be seen, as this is pushed back to Porter by... Jack Haynes, who um, I'm sure at the end of the day will have half an eye on that one, being a former Worcestershire player, but also, of course, Worcestershire come to Trent Bridge on Thursday, not start on uh, Friday, I beg your pardon, uh, not starting with two home fixtures here. This one against Essex, certainly running away from them at the moment, but then Worcestershire come on, uh, on Friday, so there'll be uh, a lot of reunions in that one as uh, Haynes off the back foot pushes this up to mid off to the skipper Westley and there's no run, uh, no run. Three Worcestershire players of course in the close season uh, came to Trent Bridge. Two of them are playing, Dylan Pennington and Jack Haynes, the other one Josh Tong is around but uh, is not fit to play at the moment and of course in the Worcestershire side former Notts man Jake Libby at the moment who uh, continues to churn out good runs for his side. Haynes taps his bat, right-hander, Porter bowls, nice foolish delivery and a textbook block. Still no runs, Paul, since lunch. No, that's right. Worcestershire are one of the four sides Essex play only once. So they have a home fixture at the end of August against Worcester, but don't uh, play at Worcester this season. And, of course, it's always the way when you uh, get the current set up, 14 matches and the 10-division side, you play five sides twice, home and away. And the other four, just the ones, one or the other. Division two, they've also started for the first time in maybe a couple of days at Headingley, Yorkshire, playing Leicestershire as the next ball is played up to uh, mid-off. Again, it's a game where it doesn't seem like there's an awful lot to play for, except potentially the chance of some bonus points. Leicestershire, much earlier in the contest, <coughs> made 354, Yorkshire 103 for three. Two matches that have seen rather more cricket at Lords. Glamorgan made 620 for three, declared that triple hundred, a record-breaking score for Sam Northeast. Middlesex are approaching it. They're 555 for eight. Beware the... Uh, the multiples of the Nelson there as this is uh, driven up to Shane Snater at mid on there's uh, no run um, I was lost for a number there triple Nelson quadruple Nelson what's five Paul help me out quintuple Qu a quint <laughs> they're on quintuple Nelson you're absolutely right the word just wouldn't come 555 for eight Middlesex against Glamorgan and if things get even worse from bat dominating ball, we'll have sextuple and septuple <laughs> and octuple before we know it. Yes, that unlucky quintuple. Next ball from Porter. And uh, there's a push and run from Haynes up to mid off to Wesley. Clean bit of fielding from the air. Oh, there might be a buzzer here, as they call it, an overthrow. And there is indeed. Well, <laughs> like London buses, uh, one brings two. They've uh, They've been out there for 12 deliveries now without a, a run and then it's pushed to Wesley who shies at the stumps, misses and then take an overthrow so Haynes goes from one to three with a gentle push and now Lyndon James presumably will uh, be able to begin his innings he's going to be facing Jamie Porter from the uh, no he's not, he's going to be facing uh, Sam Cook of Eddie Pardon from the pavilion end Cook with figures of eight over six maidens three for nine Yep, phenomenal figures for Sam Cook, and he's done this so many times as his 
in his career. Andrew Pickett's email to say, just heard the words old Parkonians that I haven't heard for years. My dad played them for many years in the 50s and 60s, cook bowls, and Lyndon James plays the ball solidly back down the pitch to the bowler. He concludes, it's where my interest in cricket came from as I was scorer for the Saturday seconds and Sunday firsts from age 11 to 18. Well, well done, Andrew. Not sure anyone uh, is so devoted to service scoring uh, nowadays as uh, they were in your day. As Cook's on his way again from the Stuart Broad end. Bowls and ball played to mid-off. Tom Wesley, no run, 52 for five. It's a different uh, matter now, isn't it, for young scorers. They can uh, hit in a lot of clubs up and down the country. They can go all digital, can't they? Just uh, just punch it in. Yes. Because the, the younger generation so used to the computers and all the rest of it. But that's where many of us, Paul, sort of learned our love of cricket at, at club games or even getting a scorebook and, and, and watching a either watching a, um, a test match on television or listening to TMS on the radio and scoring in the scorebook, learning how to do it. Cook bowls and defended by James back to the bowler again, 52 for five. And uh, in my own case, in fact, uh, Dave, you've hit the nail on the head there because uh, uh, the first official test match special test match was England v West Indies at Edgebaston in 1957. And I listened and scored listened to and scored the whole match in ghastly pink ink <laughs> in uh, the scorebook I had and um, all five days it was a heck of a test match as well as here is the next ball and that ball is uh, not far from being uh, I think he played it into his pad and it goes back down the pitch and the score remaining at 52 for five that was the game I think where um, Peter May made 285 not out and Colin Cowdery 154 putting on something like 412 for the fourth wicket and uh, uh, West Indies who'd been well on top in the early part of the game ended up scrambling a draw at 72 for 7 here is Sam Cook in bowls and that's deflected away and very nicely stopped in the gully by Feroz Cushy and score remaining at 52 for 5 Haynes 3 James yet to get off the mark there were some initials there in that batting partnership then PBH May wasn't it MCC, it was uh, was it MCC, MCC yes Cowdery, it was indeed yes, Michael Colin Cowdery yeah, yeah. and that great West Indies side of the three W's yes Walcott Weeks and Worrell never to be forgotten and Cook involved so straight he's on his way again to complete this over and James played the over out well that's a maiden, and uh, Cook, 10 overs. Uh, in fact, just waiting to see if they clock that last over figure up. No, in fact, he's... Uh, yeah, he's, he's gone on, he's now 9-7. Nine, 9-7, seven. Nine, seven, right. 9 overs, 7 maidens, 3 for 9. And uh, it's some while since he actually conceded a run yeah. because he, it was a, a little way before lunch the last time he did that. Phenomenal bowling. Yeah, he's bowled... Uh 12 dots since lunch, because one of them was uh, was a wicket. Um, the two at the crease at the moment, Jack Haynes, he made 77 in the first innings, just slapped a full toss from the spinner, Matt Critchley, straight to uh, Ben Allison, who was on the field as a sub-fielder. I think it was the only time we've seen Ben Allison actually on the field. He came on just for a brief period and took a catch. Uh, Lyndon James, he was LBW to uh, Sam Cook for eight. There's Porter in and bowls, and this is defended. Lyndon James, 25 years of age now. He uh, is an, has in, inherited the number eight shirt from Stuart Broad. Of course, uh, there are one or two other similarities with uh, the career of Broad in that both started at Oakham School. Both tall, fair-haired, all-rounders as well. 52 for five is the score. Haynes. Slightly younger, 23. This is his 46th first-class match. Already has five centuries to his name. And uh, he's going to get a boundary here. Just played with soft hands. And this one's run away down to the Hound Road stand at third man for four. Of course, all county sides predominantly elect to do away with the third man and either have the extra close infielder or the extra slip catcher. They don't tend to bother with the third man and that was to Jack Haynes' benefit he moves on to seven, knots 56 for five we do have to keep mentioning that the target is 3-3-5 but it really is only a nominal target now with knots five wickets down 
Yeah, just remind, remind me, um, come back after this ball. It's Porter, passed on by Tom Longley, bowls, and this is blocked by Jack Haynes. The old memory fade, failing me, but the New Zealander who played for Nottingham for about five years ago, batsman, um, whoever he was, got 44 of his 50 when I think he went on to make 100 at Chelmsford but 44 of the 50 oh Ross Taylor Ross Taylor thanks yeah. very much yeah. uh, he kept getting these boundaries to third yeah. man and Essex kept not putting a third man in yeah that's right wasn't it I think yeah. you're absolutely spot on as uh, Porter Bowles strikes Haynes on the pad Longley is Aston on goes the finger and Jamie Porter reduces knots to 56 for six and uh, Jack Haynes again thrusting forward might just have nipped back a little bit look from here we're, we're not in line but it looked a reasonable shout and Tom Longley had a good old look at that um, tried to weigh up in his mind whether there are any reasons he shouldn't give it the word so up went the finger Haynes LBW Porter for seven was at the crease for half an hour either side alone to face 20 balls but this one might be over sooner rather than later and Essex setting out their stall for a really good campaign in Division 1 here they've got knots 56 for 6 and since lunch knots are 6 for 2 yes that's right it, uh, just having seen this on the replay I think the only doubt in Tom Longley's mind might have been a height um, it certainly looked very straight just a case I think whether Tom uh, thought well there's a bit of doubt might have gone over the top but he eventually decided not and not 56 for six it's just real trouble just an upset for BBC Radio Nottingham and this one's running away from Nottinghamshire at quite a fast pace now remember they were set to score 335 today to win this game it was uh, always going to be a tall challenge but they're really making uh, a little bit of a uh, Horlicks of it I'm afraid they're 56 for 6 that's not taking anything away from the Essex bowling which has been terrific since lunch Knotts have lost a couple of wickets in quick succession Matthew Montgomery and now Jack Haynes 56 for 6 with a spot or two of rain in the air I've just, yeah, I've just, I've just mentioned that because I've just received um, uh, a communication from uh, photographer Simon Trafford, who's out there somewhere getting the, uh, getting the snaps, and has just sent me a message to say one or two spots of rain, and the ground staff are um, on standby. Yeah, it um, certainly looks a bit ominous. I don't think it'll sort of last all afternoon or anything like that, but we may well get an interruption. <laughs> Of course, it was bound to happen with me saying I couldn't see anywhere yeah. any of the uh, any of the apps. Rain was due. New man is Calvin Harrison, the leg spinner. Got to uh, show his prowess as a batter now as he blocks his first ball. 56 for six here on Five Sports Extra, BBC Essex, BBC Radio Nottingham, and also you can hear us on the live stream, which is available on uh, the Nottinghamshire County Cricket Club website. 56 for six. Porter has two wickets, Cook has three, Shane Snade to the other one, They're the only three bowlers used so far and Tom Wesley will continue to rotate them for as long as he can I would imagine as Porter in once more, Harrison whips this one wristily out onto the leg side for a single and certainly the ground staff are absolutely ready and prepared to bring that hover cover on if it gets any worse, 57 for six at the end of another successful over for Essex. Yeah, certainly the uh, the two sites I looked at, weather-wise, did predict that there would be the chance of a couple of showers between the hours of 2 o'clock and 4 o'clock this afternoon. So it looks as if they may have got it uh, spot on, but they were a lot more optimistic about uh, reasonably fine weather from 4 o'clock onwards. So Essex would like to think that even if they were to lose an hour or two here, they'd still have time to finish the job off and certainly everything they've done so far has been first class there have been so few remotely poor deliveries in uh, the 20 odd overs we've had as this ball's played back to the bowler Sam Cook by the batsman this impressive young cricketer Calvin Harrison 57 for 6 is the score this is the 26th of a minimum uh, 88 overs that were set to be bowled when Essex declared having added 45 in 6 overs this morning uh, 47 to Shane Snater 39 not out to 
Adam Rossington and four not out Jamie Porter. 374 for nine declared. Not set 335 to win. Cook is in bowls. That's a lead from Harrison. It didn't uh, miss the stumps by much, but um, Batsman knew what he was doing and score remaining at 57 for six with Lyndon James yet to get off the mark and Harrison just underway with a single. Can I say again, uh, we've mentioned it all four days now, what a, a joy, what a delight it it has been to see how many youngsters have been here and be allowed out onto the outfield and play with their bats and balls during the intervals again. It, there were plenty there at lunch. Cooks in, bowls, leave outside off stump. Yeah, great to see people allowed out on the outfield. We've heard from Nick Clayton uh, on the subject of scoring, which we were talking about, Dave and I. Uh, love the coverage on the stream where I've been watching uh, for the duration of this match. On the discussion you've just had on scoring, you're right in terms of going all digital. People, players can just punch in the numbers to an app. But I find there's still some apprehension to that in case someone gets it wrong and is unable to recover. Here's Cook again. Bowls to Harrison, a little bit of an outside edge, won't bring a run, goes out square on the offside to Feroz Kushi. He continues, anyway, my point is that I'm on the ECB scoring pathway and accredited in level one last season with my eyes set on level two this. They're still teaching the box style scoring, which for me is a must for everyone to learn. The technology may still fail and I suggest Roger and Paul in the official scoring chairs in this match will have a paper backup. I love scoring and stats. I just break in as Cook's on his way. Rain now very much uh, falling as uh, the ball is played to mid on and there's no run there. And just to finish his email, he says, I love scoring and stats and my club are asking me to run some sessions before the start of the season to get more people confident with scoring. All the best, Nick Clayton. Thank you very much indeed mm. and good luck with your scoring for the future. Yeah, very much so. Thank you for that, Nick. So Cook in this... Uh, Admirable spell. He still hasn't conceded a run for quite some time. Last ball of his 10th over. Bowls. And it's another maiden. Played back to the bowler very safely, very conscientiously by Harrison there, who has one to James's naught. Uh, 57 for six. And Cook, 10 overs, eight maidens, three for nine. There aren't too many bowlers on the county circuit who you would suspect of being able to return figures quite like those. No, we don't. Uh, we don't tend to have um, player of the match awards or anything in uh, in the county championship. And if there were, there'd be a number of contenders in this game. Sam Cook would certainly be up there for uh, his contributions. Now got seven wickets in the match. Joe Clark's had a good fine game as well, although uh, I'd be disappointed to have just got out for 19 in the in the second innings, but. Wonderful first inning century, six catches kept tidily as Porter, as ever, rhythmically smooth right on the money balls to the right handed Lyndon James and he defends up to mid on Snater doing the fielding. 57 for six, so it's still only seven runs scored since lunch for the loss of those two wickets, Montgomery and Haynes. Yes, I think I'd describe. Cook's bowling as metronomic professionalism. He's, he's on the mark all the time. You just don't get a rest from him as a batsman. Comes in again. Ball's worked to leg. There'll be a couple of runs here for Lyndon James. Takes him off the mark, moves him on to two. Both tall young men, Lyndon James and Calvin Harrison. 6'4", six, 6'5", six, something like that. Absolutely tower over me. Yeah, I mean, one thing I think is true, I don't have any stats to back it up, but it seems to me there are more seriously tall cricketers nowadays than used to be the mm. case, um, you know, back in the 20th century. 59 for six. Perfectly honest, I can't see any sign or semblance of any rain. There's certainly no umbrellas. As, uh, this next one is drilled crisply by James, but Jamie Porter thrusts out an arm and stops it going beyond him for runs nicely stopped i think uh, i think it's just a precaution that the ground staff are hanging around there now there's, there's certainly uh, no sign of the crowd being inconvenienced that might be a brolly right at the back of the uh, yeah the pavilion seating over there a green one that there'll just be the odd spot in yeah. the air and the light is as poor as it's been today really yeah floodlights aren't on yet though we have seen them on various times in the match as the next one is 
eased into the offside. Essex need four more wickets. They've uh, got Harrison and James here at the crease. Brett Hutton, Dylan Pennington and Dane Patterson to come. Remember in the first innings, not the lower order was very abruptly blown away. The last four wickets fell for only five runs and four of those were to Dane Patterson who came in at number 11. It's his first ball for four and was cleaned up to his second. So didn't uh, last for long. Essex did a really ruthless job on the lower order in the first innings as Porter bowls and uh, James leaves his bat out there. Had a little fiddle towards it, which uh, brought about an appeal from behind the wicket. Dean Elgar, of course, is used to playing a lot of international matches where he might just have been recommending a review there, but uh, unfortunately there isn't uh, that facility available. I don't think he hit it. No. Um, but it, it certainly was enough to uh, make Essex wonder um, had it just brushed the bat. He, he played it so far away from his body. Porter again. Past umpire long limb bowls and this time nice smooth defensive push back to the bowler from Lyndon James. So again, not just not being allowed to wriggle off the hook here. They, they're really under intense pressure. The fielding's good, the bowling's excellent. There's no freebies. The two umpires are getting together now for a bit of a chat and a little glimpse skywards from them. I wonder if they're wondering if there should be a call to put the floodlights on. I don't think it's as gloomy as we have had uh, when the lights have gone on. Seems as if they're uh, just taking their normal positions. They are, so we're going to play on for a bit longer. 59 for 6 then. Uh, quite a long email from John Rossell who says, Good afternoon, gentlemen. Would like to say thank you to Paul, Don, Dave and for four delightful days of commentary on an interesting game which is now slipping away from us. He's evidently a Nottingham supporter. The interviews along the way have been full of interest as a break in as Sam Cook's on his way in, bowling his 11th over, player and a miss outside off stump. Maybe Calvin Harrison was just beginning to pull the bat away from that, give him the benefit of the doubt, 59 for six. Continuing, he says, and the comments always um, scrupulously fair to both sides and inevitably knowledgeable. This is the first year for a long time uh, that Beryl and I haven't had season tickets for Trent Bridge, but as I turn 90 in January and we've given up the car, YouTube has become the preferred alternative when the weather is iffy. Well, well done, sir. At the age of 90, there's more to come. Here is Cook again in and bowls, and that has got to be out, I think. Yeah, he pushed forward at that, taken on the pad, and Steve O'Shaughnessy's uh, finger raised to send Harrison on his way, and uh, we had, he probably needed to get a little bit further down the track to that. He was rather caught on the crease. 59 for 8. This is an extraordinary uh, performance from Sam Cook since lunch. Not, not yet conceded a run. It's 59 for seven, actually. I was, I was just checking there. Oh, I do beg your pardon, yeah. <laughs> I was just checking there that they still Carried got, away. <laughs> <laughs> they've still got three left to, uh, to try and hang on to for as long as possible. Uh, Calvin Harrison at the crease just for 10 minutes, faced 10 balls and uh, only made the single 59 for seven. Cook figures of four for nine. This is his 11th over. That's following on from his splendid first innings effort. He ended up with four for 59, but of course that includes a hat trick as well. So uh, big chef, little chef, sous chef, master chef, whatever you want to call him. Um, he's had a terrific visit to Nottingham and uh, there might be more to come yet. 59 for seven. Did mention earlier in the match when we had the hat-trick that the last time there was a hat-trick here uh, by a visiting player 2018 Somerset we ended up getting two hat-tricks in the same match Tom Abel for uh, Somerset and then Craig Overton got a hat-trick here comes Brett Hutton coming in at number nine with uh, a little bit of work to do um, he was dismissed by Sam Cook first ball in the first inning so he won't be looking forward to this no he's, he's certainly a, a very very strongly built man Brett Hutton, he makes a formidable figure as he makes his way to the middle. And, uh, well, while he's just about to take guard, we'll continue with uh, John's email. 
He says, uh, mention was made by one of your correspondents earlier in the game of Mike Bear for Essex. I joined the RAF in May 1952 National Service and almost the first question asked of the assembled crowd of lads as, are there any professional sportsmen here? There were two, Harry Webster, who played football for Bolton Wanderers, and Mike, who was an Essex cricketer. Yes, I remembered uh, Michael Bear. I was talking about him yesterday. And uh, he's a terrific fieldsman and decent batters. Here comes Cook, bowling <coughs> to Brett Hutton, takes it on the pad, but no appeal from the bowler there, as it was clearly going to have strayed down leg side. Uh, he concludes, uh, he was modest, unassuming, but a hugely talented batsman, bowler, an outstanding fielder, also a delightful companion. Memories revived, I googled him only to discover he passed away 24 years ago, and important innings he uncharacteristically failed to complete satisfactorily. Thanks again for all the good work. Uh, and thank you to you, John. Uh, great to hear you're still listening the ripe old age of 90. And I hope there's more to come for you. As here's Cook <coughs> in and bowls. That's Paul's uh, played in the offside. Four wickets to his name for Sam Cook. 10.4 overs, eight maidens, four for nine. And the economy is as impressive as the wickets he's taken, really. He's bowled more overs than runs conceded. Yeah, this will be disappointing for Nottinghamshire, of course. They've not really made Essex work um, any harder than they need to have done to get these wickets. They've put the ball in good areas, but the wickets have been surrendered too cheaply. Seven have gone down in 28 overs. Without a doubt. Oh, and here's another. And this time I am right in saying there are eight down. 59 for eight. The middle stump is knocked down to the ground. Sam Cook has yet another five for... And, uh, well, extraordinary bowling. I've seen him do it so often. I remember the day he got 7 for 20 at Canterbury. Um, and, uh, well, this is a similar performance here. Not needing a token 335 to win and a minimum 88 overs are now 59 for 8. And a pair for Brett Hutton in the match. Um, out first ball in the first innings, bold Cook. Out third ball in the second innings, bold by Cook. Figures 10.5 overs, eight maidens, five for nine. And since lunch, he's got three for none. Dylan Pennington, another one who fell first ball in the first innings to Sam Cook. He's on his way out to the middle. And then there's only Dane Patterson. Um, where is the rain? I can hear all the Nottinghamshire supporters uh, saying, I, I, I think... Um, like I said all along, I think we're going to be all right. Well, otherwise. I, yeah, I mean, you would think, judging from what we're just watching, I mean, two wickets have gone in the over just completed, that only two left now. And although there's a fairly heavy bank of cloud overhead, there's a little bit of brightening on the horizon. So you'd think at some point there will be enough time left in this game for Essex to finish the very fine job they've done here. And it's it's worth remembering that 24 hours ago, the game was well and truly very much in the balance, with um, Essex having gone to lunch five down and only 89 in front. And at that stage, if you'd been told someone would win this game easily, you, you, you could easily, have, it, or it could just as easily, have been Nottinghamshire. But um, since then, both with bat and ball, Essex have played outstanding cricket. Very much so, yes. Of course, uh, I was saying before lunch... Days one, two and three, <coughs> the afternoon session has, uh, has given us a, a century stand from the side that we're batting. This is uh, hugely, hugely different. Was it 50 for four at lunch? Now 59 for eight. And in fact, there's one ball left of mm. this Sam Cook over from the Stuart Broad end. He's on his way now. And bowls and that one has taken the batsman and is he caught may only be off the body it is they uh, appealed for it the ball looped up to be taken by Michael Pepper wicket keeping in place of Adam Rossington who has an injured finger but it never looked to me as if there was any bat in that so Pennington survives and it'll be James on strike at the start of the next over Cook duly has figures of 11 overs 9 maidens 5 for 9 and Nottinghamshire are 59 for 8, and we've had 28 of the minimum 88 overs bowled. I don't know if Sam Cook is one of those that uh, collects 
memorabilia and souvenirs as he goes uh, along his career, but it could well be that he's taking two match balls home here. The one in the first innings, I'm sure he'd want for his hat trick. And now um, with a five for in the second innings, he might be one that uh, wants to grab the ball off the umpire at the end of the game here. So he might, he might have two, uh, two balls in his kit bag or coffin as he makes his way home. Here's Porter into bowl to Lyndon James who's on two pushes this into the offside. There was a chat between overs between Lyndon James and Dylan Pennington. Heaven knows what that would have been about. Good luck mate probably. 59 for eight with just Dane Patterson to come and Essex on the brink of starting the season in very impressive fashion indeed. It'll be 20 points to them. It'll be four points to Nottinghamshire only. And as I said earlier, in Division 1, Durham and Hampshire washed away and they each get eight points. So it's pushed into the offside. Lots have competed for a goodly percentage of the ten and a bit sessions we've had now. They've in, indeed probably won maybe three sessions and uh, can lay a claim to sharing another two or three of them. But ultimately they're going to be blown away inside four days by a very strong Essex side who will be uh, expected to challenge once again. Not sixth last year, Essex runners up to Surrey. Next ball is defended again by Lyndon James. It remains 59 for eight. Yeah, I mean, obviously there was uh, a certain amount of a new era beginning with Alistair Cook's retirement and Dan Lawrence going to Surrey, but that didn't affect the bowling attack at all and, and it's, it's the bowling attack that really has taken Essex to the success they've had in the last seven or eight years. Lyndon James on two. Jamie Porter to bowl to him again. He defends. Funny we were speculating and sort of been building up to this moment in the contest and thinking that round about now it might all be about Simon Harmer against the Notts Middle Order, but we've not seen Harmer bowl today and the Notts Middle Order has been and gone. Yeah, interesting just to note the ball being wiped there, so at some point there has been a, a few spots, but it's actually brighter now than it was uh, five minutes ago. So I'll come back to the ball after uh, this delivery from Porter, nice drive from James, won't get a run, plays it to uh, to mid-on. Don't know if you noticed whilst you were doing your update, just uh, before one o'clock last over of the morning session, Essex did show the ball to the umpire. Yes, I did um, see that, yeah. And Steve O'Shaughnessy had a look at it and gave it them back. We've not had a ball change in the match, and as far as I can remember, I'm pretty certain that is the first time that it's sort of been queried by uh, a fielding side, either of the fielding sides, whereas... As you would know, over the last couple of years, there's been so many ball changes every day in uh, the county championship. This is played on the leg side and they'll get a single. It's off Porter, so Cook still hasn't leaked to run since lunch, but Kushi made a fine stop diving to his right, but they took a single. Lyndon James getting the single and that will bring him down to this end to face Sam Cook. And it's 60 for eight, Nottinghamshire in, uh, well, I don't know what's worse than in a whole heap of trouble, but... They've long since passed that point where they were in a whole heap of trouble. But from 50 for four at lunch, Montgomery out for 12, Haynes for seven. Um, Brett Hutton without scoring, Calvin Harrison for one, 60 for eight. So Sam Cook will unsurprisingly continue from the Stuart Broad end, bowling initially to Lyndon James with three slips still. And bowls now. Uh, it's just uh, played into the offside. There's no run there. Got, still got the emails firing in. We'll try and get through them. Uh, and Nick Clayton says, I would add as well. Remember, Nick uh, was the scorer that we read the email from a moment or two ago. He said, I would add as well that people should be just as interested in scoring as they are playing, as without the scorer, the game would not happen. Fair point. And um, uh, always had a lot of respect for scorers. Mm. Uh, We've got rather, ah, uh, here's Cook again in a bowls and a little bit of a play and a miss there. Score remaining 60 for 8. Rather a long email from Graham House who says, has anyone yet suggested a reasonable solution to the fact that Division 1 teams don't play four of their fellow counties both home and away? This really irks me, fair yep. point you make here, as I feel it could happen, uh, sorry, cheapen the competition at some point. E.g. a championship winning team only having played the bottom five teams on the second occasion. 
Um, we'll come back to that. And I know Dave yeah, wants yeah. to add his uh, four pennyworth. Well, I just agree with it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, here's the next ball from Cook, and it's played back to the bowler. Now, a uh, good friend of mine who writes for the Times, Neville Scott, was saying to me yesterday, he, he has a good long look ahead, and was saying, well, um, sorry, have got a hard task on this coming year because the three sides most likely um, to trouble them, and he thought they were uh, Hampshire, Lancashire, and um, Somerset, I think he said, they have to play them twice anyway. Some of the more formidable counties they have to play twice. Here is Cooking and Bowles, and this ball is played to mid-on for no run. Essex, on the other hand, although they have to play Surrey twice, but they only have to play Hampshire and Lancashire once. So it can vary, as our correspondent is saying. It does potentially present uh, an unsatisfactory yeah. challenge. Yeah. Um. <laughs> how many years it is now I've been saying it but uh, absolutely loved two divisions to nine yeah me too everybody plays everybody twice 16 matches Cook bowls and that's a lovely shot for four goodness me that's a shot the like of which we haven't seen since Clark was out um, and a beautiful on drive from Lyndon James uh, everything perfect about it he moves up to 764 for eight yeah, very nice shot. High quality shot from Lyndon James. He's uh, batted at five the last two seasons, played in virtually every game the last uh, couple of years, Lyndon James, because he made his debut against Essex back here um, a number of years ago now, I think uh, 2019. Picked up uh, three wickets in his first bowling uh, effort. Yeah, he did well, think, didn't uh, he? I think Morley VJ was his uh, first. Yes, first quite right. Wicket. Good memory. Cooks in to complete the over, and he almost got his revenge there. So uh, that's rather dented his figures here, that boundary. Uh, 12 overs, 9 maidens, 5 for 13. Um, just to continue with, um, if I may, with Graham's email, uh, it says, I remember hearing an awful lot from Andrew Strauss a couple of years ago about six team divisions in the county championship, which would solve this issue, but mean there are only 10 championship games a season, an utterly ludicrous suggestion. My personal suggestion would be the following. Move to six team divisions, but in addition to 10 matches home and away against teams in a county's own division, every team would play four interdivisional games. For example, a Division 1 team would play one home match versus a Division 2 team, one away match versus a different Division 2 team, and the same against two Division 3 teams. Um, that would result in 14 games a season. Well, uh, thank you very much for your email, Graham, and uh, some good points made. Yes, uh, during the Covid season and uh, the one after, those sorts of things were tried as the next ball from Jamie Porter's played up to mid-on conference system it was uh, loosely termed wasn't it Pennington is on strike yet to score a run for Nottinghamshire this is of course is his uh, first game since that move from New Road first ball duck in the first innings it's gone a little longer this time round that's uh, the second ball he's faced now but yet to score a run he's bowled nicely in both innings and there's a lot of promise a lot of things to like about the cricket of Dylan Pennington who now gets runs and he'll get four of them just open the face sufficiently to guide it between slips and gully it runs away quickly across the outfield and has gone for four so he's up and running 68 for eight and at the moment any rain there may have been has ceased and yeah. it's quite bright actually now uh, things have uh, certainly visibly improved in the last 10 minutes and um, from an Essex point of view I don't think they've too much to worry about from the uh, elements, even though Wesley is still drying the ball on a towel. So there clearly was enough just to dampen the uh, the surface um, in that period between 20 minutes ago and 10 minutes ago. And actually, Wesley's just uh, thrown the ball back to uh, the umpire, but I rather doubt whether they're going to agree to uh, change it. Yes, um, the umpire having a little look at it there. I don't think he was sort of saying there's anything wrong with it uh, or whatever. He was just uh, I think as a, as a courtesy as much as anything else was just showing Tom Longley the umpire the uh, the ball. Now dried it's back in the hands of Jamie Porter who bowls to Dylan Pennington pushes this back to the bowler the ground staff are still visible over there loitering with intent near the hover cover but every single one of them 
looking at their phones. Look at every one of them looking at their phones. <laughs> Crikey, there's some uh, there's some money to be made, isn't there? If you uh, if you own a phone company, more yeah. than a word. 68 for eight, Nottinghamshire. Had a miserable time of things. They picked up the ninth Essex wicket early on this morning, and then the declaration. Here's the drive past Jamie Port, who just got a hand on it, but there will be a couple of runs for Dylan Pennington. Moves on to six, 70 for eight. Scoreboard looks marginally better, but not then when you take into context that they're chasing 335, 70 for eight. Yes, it's certainly, I don't think we anticipated anything quite as dramatic as that when Knotts uh, went after what was always a formidable target, but really it was rendered irrelevant really within six overs when Knotts had lost the top three with just 18 on the ball. We've got another result in, I'll tell you about in a second. Bouncer from uh, Porter, it was high over the head of Pennington and through to substitute wicketkeeper Michael Pepper. They're not going to get on at uh, Old Trafford, so they've Shaken hands there on a draw. Lancashire 202 all out. Sorry, 15 without loss. Match drawn. So they'll each get eight points for the drawn contest. Lancashire won't get any bonus points at all. They uh, they didn't get any batting points, didn't get any bowling points. Sorry, we'll take 11 points from the game. So sorry, 11. Lancashire, 8. Durham have got eight points. Hampshire have got eight points with their games uh, washed away. 72 for eight. It may well be that the only result in Division 1 is here at Trent Bridge and Notts could very well have competed reasonably hard as I say they've had really good moments in this game but uh, competed for four days and they're going to end up bottom of the Division 1 table at the end of the first round of matches that's, uh, that's the way it goes I'll have to take that on the chin and bounce back against Worcestershire here next weekend Worcestershire currently 283 for three still batting at Edgbaston, Warwickshire, uh, Warwickshire, the home side, trying to get uh, wickets. Worcestershire lead by 312 in that one. Delay while Cushy was uh, oh, had a helmet brought out to him, and he's now fielding at bat pad. Porter into bowl to Dylan Pennington down the leg side. Pennington gets out of the way. Yeah, he's only popped the helmet on and uh, whatever other protective gear he needs, other than the pads. We've not got those enormous pads. Um, yet on display that uh, Feroz Cushy had in the first Nottinghamshire innings when he was standing at short leg. It's maybe taking him a, a little bit by surprise just being asked to, uh, to go in there. Essex have had a, a tinkering of the field, have they? I think they're going to put a leg slip in. Yes, Jordan Cox is running to leg slip. So there might be a little bit of uh, rib tickling music here for Dylan Pennington with the short leg and the leg slip in. And Porter aiming for his ribs. He's in and he does and it's down the leg side and Pennington gets out of the way just in time and it goes through to Pepper. Porter to Pennington and keeper Pepper. All the Pepper Peppers. 72 for 8. Uh, continuing with uh, the emails, thanks to all of you who've uh, contacted us today. And uh, that's at bbcessexcricket at gmail.com. Anthony Reardon uh, says, Hi, Paul and Dave. Would just like to check in from Bangkok, Thailand. Mm. Glad to hear you and the Essex and not teams again and hope that Essex can finish one place higher than last season. Thank you, Anthony. Second Thailand correspondent of the yeah. day. Yeah, of course, they do have some cricket out there. It's, uh, here is Cook in bowls, and the ball is played to mid-off for no run. It's actually Jordan Cox from cover who runs in to save uh, Tom Wesley the trouble of uh, picking the ball up. Again, he drives the ball. Um, David Phipps comes back and says on the above uh, county cricket replays, what are your views on this? Admittedly, I know now about the technology, but is it expensive requiring such kit? Uh, that's David from Seaham in County Durham. Um, here's the next delivery from Sam Cook. Play back past the bowler, but there won't be a run as it goes uh, Wesley running across behind the uh, bowler's arm to retrieve. 72 for 8. Yeah, not quite sure what he means by county cricket replays there, but thank you anyway uh, to David. Nick Hines comes back from Crete 
on the subject of scoring. Do either of you guys remember the table cricket game Al Zat? I certainly do. <laughs> uh, as a schoolboy, I invented my own two by six sided pencils. One mark, one, two, three, four, six, and Al Zat. As here is cooking again. And bowls and uh, nicely played by James down to mid off. There is no run, and he concludes uh, the other showing caught LBW bowled, run out, hit wicket, and not out. I created my own scorebook from an exercise book, and I would have uh, Essex playing any other county side. Hours of fun. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, I think I had a pretty miserable attempt at making some in, in metal work, you know, when you had to make something of your yeah. choice and whatever, but yeah. Well, when I was a teacher, my great friend on the staff and I, if we both had the same period free, would uh, get the old dice out and uh, get stuck into games of how's that with imaginary teams, ball played down the wicket. We actually wrote a book, the ill-fated Cricket Through the Looking Glass, which I think sold all of seven copies, and uh, we were assured by the publisher that it would be on sale in every uh, bookshop in the country, and needless to say, uh, it was a lie. <laughs> Have you still got a copy? Yes, I have. Yeah. Somewhere stashed away. As uh, Cook is on his way back in from the Stuart Broad end. Bowls, and again, it's played defensively down to mid on. And, and, and what was that about then? What was in there? It, it was an imaginary tournament uh, with, with, oh. with, with these fantasy teams that we had. And... The one little bit of success it had, somebody uh, thought enough of the book to have chapter by chapter printed out and distributed among the prisoners of uh, uh, one of the prisons. I forget which one up and down the country. Apparently the prisoners loved it. So if nothing else, I've, I've gone down well with the criminal classes. As Cook is in again. Still those three slips in place. Bowls. And uh, this ball beats the batsman, James there, goes through his defences, but he's played very well here, actually. He must have been in for a good three quarters of an hour by now. Uh, he has seven, Pennington six, and Nottinghamshire are 72 for eight. And we have now completed 32 overs and Sam Cook's figures. Perhaps he will be given the rest now. 13 overs, 10 maidens, five for 13. Yes, if you don't behave, we'll extend your sentence and you'll have to read some more. <laughs> <laughs> 72 for 8 is the Nottinghamshire score. Absolutely no difference in the appearance looking up of the clouds. A slate grey, but not dark enough for the floodlights to come on. The, for the first time in the match, the flags we can see are just hanging limply. They've virtually been blown off the masts over the first three days. It's Porter, bold unchanged since lunch, and uh, indeed bold for much of the, the first session as well. He's into his 14th over, a delivery that's dug in, and Dylan Pennington defends, as we saw in the last over. There's a short leg in there for Dylan Pennington, and a leg slip, as well as two orthodox slip fielders. So Pennington knows he's going to get it round about his, uh, his ribs or his body. If Porter can just keep finding that sweet spot just short of a length, he's in again and bowls, pitches this one up and Dylan Pennington happy to defend. Pennington, uh, I was actually speaking to him uh, on the media day on Wednesday about um, past experiences against Essex and uh, rather than any bowling exploits, of course he brought up the, uh, his career best batting um, his only first class 50 came against Essex at Chelmsford when he batted um, a couple of three years ago. A long, long partnership with Jake Libby, who finished 180 not out for Worcestershire down at Chelmsford. He's uh, nibbled at this one. It's gone through to Michael Pepper, 72 for eight. How Notts could deal with him getting a, a first century for Nottinghamshire this afternoon. Yeah, well, that would make it interesting. <laughs> Six not out. James is seven. They've combined their scores to put on 13 so far for the ninth wicket. Nobody's reached 20 yet. That's the, probably the most damning of all the uh, stats on the knots inning so far. Clark's 19, the top scorer. This has worked 
just out of reach of the short leg fielder Cushy and Pennington gets a single they're both on 7 73 for 8 19 for Joe Clark we've got 12 for Matthew Montgomery 10 for Asiba Mead and everybody else either in single figures or poor old Brett Hutton getting his second duck of the game well I think we're almost bound to see uh, Messrs Porter and Cook out of the attack uh, if uh, they haven't got these last two wickets, shall we say, in the next four overs. And uh, just be interesting to see if we see an over of spin before the game ends. Porter. Now to Lyndon James. And he jerked his head round there so quickly, Paul. I thought potentially there was going to be... Uh, that's a celebration there. The way he just jerked his head yeah. around, because very often that's a telltale sign that you've nicked it and you turn just to see if the keeper's caught it. But uh, clearly he was very close to feathering that one through to Pepper, but didn't. Yeah, it was a good delivery. It rather squared the batsman up, like you. I just wondered whether there might have been a, a feather on that. Porter posing questions final ball of the over and uh, won't get James this time because Lyndon James solidly behind the final ball might be the end of Jamie Porter 14 overs four maidens two for 37 at the other end Sam Cook 13 overs 10 maidens five for 13 fabulous figures from them both yes that's the great quality that Sam Cook uh, brings to the Essex side in that he uh, has this ability to take a lot of wickets when it's his day in very quick succession and there's that uh, well-worn expression in cricket you can't win a game in uh, a single session but you can lose it and uh, if you have a dramatic collapse um, the game can just uh, completely effectively be uh, rendered over from one side's point of view two batsmen have a brief chat out in the middle Sam Cook is uh, mm. going to continue Yes, it's 20 to 3, so they've been going unchanged for an hour now. Yeah, they're two tough men, actually, uh, Cook and Porter. Cook's on his way. With a back pad in now, and uh, that is taken, that slip by Dean Elgar. That is the end now of uh, Pennington, Dylan Pennington, caught by Elgar at first slip. Cook has his six, 13.1 overs, 10 maiden, six for 13. And uh, the end surely is nigh, uh, 73 for nine up on the board and even looking up at the skies above, while they're not particularly encouraging in terms of the sun shining, uh, they look perfectly safe enough to see Essex uh, over the line here. Yeah, not so nine down and only uh, Dame Patterson to come, so I'm afraid this is almost certainly going to be over from the knots angle um, in, the, in the very near future. That's, uh, that's what generally tends to happen when Dane Patterson wanders out to the middle. Knots have been pretty disappointing, it has to be said, in this their second innings here. I think 335 in 88 was always going to be slightly out of reach. The optimistic spin was that perhaps Ben Duckett, if he could be at the crease for any length of time, they might uh, at least keep Essex at bay and just keep it interesting in terms of well maybe maybe after tea they might uh, they might be able to pull off something special but quite frankly they've been blown away by a far superior side here and uh, Sam Cook figures of six for 13 these are absolutely fantastic county championship figures yeah anybody who says you can't bowl with the uh, the Cookaburra ball um, needs only have a, have, a little, have a little look at the highlights of this one. Yeah, absolutely right. Uh, on that subject, Kingsley Dent says, really enjoying your informative and entertaining commentary. Great to be able to see good red ball cricket again. Is it me or is Sam Cook's arm action quicker and has the faster ball contributed to the flurry of wickets? Well, that is a good point because I've been noticing... Um, how quickly he's bowling. Now, he's never going to be sort of 90 miles an hour plus, but I do think he's bowled pretty quickly here and uh, definitely more quickly than most of the times I've seen him. So I think you've raised a very good point. We've also heard from uh, uh, Peter from Malaga, currently in a very wet Cape Town, as Cook comes in and bowls to... Dane Patterson, who plays this confidently enough to mid-off, and there's no run there. And Peter says, although Essex may get the win, its value may be considerably reduced if they get penalised for Cushy's bat, uh, bat width 
infraction reported on the BBC text commentary yesterday for a similar infraction a couple of years back. Lancashire were fined 10 points. I think it might have been Durham, Durham actually, yeah. uh, who were fined 10 points. Um, but thank you, Peter. Yep, perfectly uh, valid point you make. As Cook comes in and bowls to Patterson. And he's played this one away. Uh, go for a quick single. Shy comes in. Had it hit, I don't think he would have made it. But uh, <laughs> he, fortunately, the, the ball just misses. And uh, the, he gets off the mark with a single. And the score is 74 for nine. When you say you don't think he'd made it, were well, you referring to the middle of the strip or the actual, <laughs> or the actual crease? Because they'd only just crossed, I think. Yes, it was no, out, it was out, it was by, out by some way. yards yeah. and yards and yards. But yeah. Snater missed from uh, yeah. a side on throw. It was... Uh, poorly judged it gets Patterson off the mark I guess but it was poorly judged hit it straight to the fielder and set off and that could have been the end probably should have been the, the end Shane Snate is so so close Cook is on his way in bowls uh, that's uh, pleasantly driven and well stopped by Jordan Cox at full stretch diving to his right at extra cover and I imagine one of the people who will be more pleased than most that the throw didn't hit Dave will have been the bowler because yeah. uh, Sam Cook he loves taking wickets and I don't think he's feeling one bit tired out there success keeps you going uh, Adrian Thomas nice to hear from you again Adrian asking what's happened to uh, to Will Young the New Zealand overseas um, due to join knots he's got married he's got married he, yeah, he won't be around for the Worcester game next week but from then on the third match onwards he'll be here and uh, this ball is driven very firmly down to mid-off by Lyndon James, who plays some handsome strokes. And uh, Wesley Fields, and there's no run, 74 for nine. Richard Vaughan says 10 wickets in the match for uh, a little chef now. Uh, three in the first, uh, no, sorry, four in the first and six in the second. Yep, you're absolutely right. Uh, who else has been in touch? Lots of people asking about uh, what on earth is happening. Is it bad batting or good bowling? Bit of both. Cook bowls and James plays it to mid-off and the score is 74 for nine. I mean, in these situations, there's always one or two players who sort of play well enough to raise a question mark against some of the others. And into this category fits Lyndon James, seven from 38 deliveries. And to give him his due, he hasn't often been in any trouble at all. No. Andy Hind is talking about uh, Franklin. What a great blow. Remember meeting him at a Bruce French benefit match at Collingham. First delivery was rather sedate, and Collingham opener Martin Underwood smashed it to long off for four. Big mistake. Don't think anybody saw the next delivery. It flew past Martin's nose. Thank you, Andy. 74 for nine. If anything, the, uh, the skies are getting ever lighter. So uh, might even be a ray or two of sunshine on the... Uh, on the Essex parade, 74 for nine. Um, we're very, very close to the end, and it could almost be a, a victory moment any second now, Paul. So I'm, I'm here if you need me, but uh, you see if you can guide your side over the line, as uh, as I'm sure you'd like to do. Thank you very much indeed. My good friend uh, Jeff Leonard has uh, emailed. We'll come to him in just a moment. As Porter's in, and. Uh, Bowls and uh, this ball's been clubbed right down the ground there. Terrific pick up for six. And uh, Porter stares back in annoyance at uh, Patterson there, who's a strong man. Beautiful pick up. Seven to him, seven to James, 80 for nine. <laughs> Let me just read this for you, Dave, as we're on the subject. Um, Jeff, he says, good morning all. Now, Jeff is a Gloucester supporter who listens yep. to other counties. And he says, one of my favourite matches in Paul's very funny book is the Commoners v. the Royals with Arthur Mullard uh, <laughs> and D. Trotter opening the batting against the bowling of Prince Charles and the Duke of Gloucester. <laughs> so th that gives you a hint of, the, uh, of, of what you're missing by the book long since having gone out of print. <laughs> so, D. Trotter being Del Trotter. Yeah. yeah Del Boy. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Del Boy. Brilliant. Yeah, thanks very much much uh, Jeff great to hear from you as ever and Porter is on his way having suffered that indignity 80 for 9 on the board bowls and <laughs> bowls <laughs> predictably short delivery but Patterson sees it coming and lowers his head and a score remaining at 80 for 9 yeah, Patterson in the first innings um, it is first ball for four second ball he was cleaned up so uh, it's lasted a tad longer, but uh, he's already hit a six, the only one of the innings. 
so far. Yep, nobody can begrudge him that. Why not have a bit of fun? There's Porter's inner bowls. And an enormous yahoo, and out goes the middle stump. Leg and off are still standing. And Essex have won by, uh, off the top of my head, I think it's going to be something like 254 runs. Um, Dave will correct me if I've got that wrong. Um, and Nottinghamshire all out for 80, having been set 335. Absolutely spot on. The bottom of the scoreboard already. Essex win by 254 runs. Last man, uh, Dane Patterson, bowled by Jamie Porter for seven. Porter finishes with three for 43. Sam Cook, 14 overs, 10 maidens, six for 14. They're not so dusty, are they, those figures? Terrific stuff from uh, Sam Cook, terrific stuff from Jamie Porter, terrific stuff from Essex. They've uh, won this match as... Paul quite rightly did the maths there quickly before it went on the board by 254 runs, not 80 all out as the ground staff can't wait a moment longer before getting the hover cover on. We'll just uh, mute the effects microphone so we're not totally drowned out as we uh, as we just round things up here. But crikey, after scores of uh, 253 for Essex, 293 for Knotts, and then Essex 374 for nine declared, um, they uh, they lost the ninth wicket this morning and then uh, pulled the plug and then you look at the board 80 the fourth innings of the match they're not second innings 80 and the points are already up there Essex 20 points defeat Nottinghamshire four points by 254 runs and this has been a tremendous start of the season for Essex as uh, Sam Cook is just given the ball by the umpires and then pushed to the front to lead his side off by uh, the rest of his teammates but from the other side of things you can see Dane Patterson and Lyndon James out there just almost sheepishly at the back of the queue <laughs> waiting to go off um, Lyndon James seven not out Dane Patterson out for seven not so been has to be said in, in the end well and truly thrashed in uh, numerical terms they competed I guess up until the start of day four but it's been one-way traffic today yeah well let me say how much I appreciate your great hospitality Dave and thoroughly enjoyed your company as you know I couldn't make it last year delighted to have uh, not only made it this time but uh, very much enjoyed what was a very even uh, an enjoyable cricket match long before Essex finally got on top and an appropriate way to end is uh, with um, an email from Mike Bradders now in Dorset, and he says, Good afternoon, gents. I've been avidly following the Notts Essex encounter since Thursday. What a wonderful way to start the season. Tremendous match, which has swung one way and then the other. To make unmissable, the input from um, Dave and you, Paul, has been nigh on perfect. Just wish that Dave could join you and Dick Davis in covering future Essex matches. Oh, so if you're out on the unemployment uh, at all, uh, Dave, you know where to come. But thank you very much for uh, your great uh, hospitality. Well, you're very, very welcome. As you know, we always uh, we always like to catch up. I think it's I think it's beginning of September that Notts are down at Chelmsford. Aren't you? It is quite right. I, I erroneously said on the first day. Um, this is unfortunate because it's one of those situations where Notts don't have a, re a reverse game against Essex and then very quickly Don pointed out yeah you're coming beginning of September so we'll very much look forward to that best wishes to uh, to Dickie to Don to Indeed. everybody else down there at Essex best wishes and uh, grateful thanks to all the Essex supporters who've either tuned in or watched the pictures or, or sent correspondence hope you have a great cricket season uh, to all the Knots fans well I'll be back here uh, God willing on uh, on Friday morning just before 11 o'clock when we can do it again and crikey let's see if Knots can uh, turn it round they've Peter, be, I'm sure there'll be lots of positives from uh, the skipper and the coach and the rest of them for the, what they put in for the first three days here. But on the last day, there's certainly got to be uh, one or two issues to be looked at. So again, many thanks to everybody for taking the trouble to get in touch. Um, but um, it's it's the spoils go to Essex and. And, you know, the last word is, uh, is safe travels, Paul, till we meet again. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, for Essex listeners, next game Friday as well. But uh, that's uh, Essex at home to play our rivals from uh, over the Medway. Kent, followed by another home game against Lancashire. But uh, thanks to one and all and to five Sports Extra listeners as well. Great to have had you on board. Uh, Essex at Victorious by 254 runs. Paul Newton with uh, on behalf of Dave Bracegirdle saying thank you very much for listening.